Hey, what's up, everybody? We're back, man. It's first smoke of the day. It's your boy, Pack here in the building. Here with my co-host, Blackleaf. Yay, yeah, yay. Yeah. Episode 74, man. We got a special guest in the building, my man, Matt from Turtle Pico. What's good, homie? What's up, y'all? How, How you doing? Boys? Thanks for having me. All the way from the Bay, baby. That's right. Just flew in today. That's right. Just got off the plane. Let's go, man. Had to do it. Had to make it happen. Appreciate you coming down, man. It was pouring rain this morning. I'm like, all right. Fuck it, let's do it. One of those I, days. I did check LA's weather. I'm like, oh, okay, it'll be it's cool. It's obviously it was sunny and cool. <laughs> yeah, right. don't sweat. Now it's raining. It's fucking windy and rainy. Yeah, it's like some bay weather down here today. Yeah, you brought it pretty with pretty much. You. I was like when we were landing, they're like, I'm like, oh, it's actually sunny. I, I'm sitting. I'm the plane was late because I'm sitting on the tarmac and it's fucking hailing. You can hear ding 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 on oh, the wow. side of the plane. And wifey texts me and she's like. Babe, it's hailing. I, I, did you guys take off? I'm like, nah, we're sitting here. She's like, okay. But then I saw so I hit you up. Like, I don't know when, how late I'm going to be, but a few minutes later, we cleared up. And But yeah. the takeoff was pretty many. Like, I haven't really been in a takeoff where the plane is hitting lefts and rights. And yeah. like, it felt like it was going legit, you know, five to 10 feet either way. I'm like, all right, like, I'm just going to. Stick right, it cool. out. Yeah, we got that. You're strapped in. Cool. You're strapped in. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so ain't going nowhere. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> okay. Help. Um, shit, man. I know you got a hell of a story. Somewhat of OG in the game. Definitely came up with all the OGs. Um, for sure. Talk about the beginnings and shit. Like, where'd you grow up? So yeah, I'm a Frisco product. I grew up in Noy Valley. I, I, I figured, and my right, heart told me that for right sure. Right by Dolores Park. Uh, like. My dad grew weed and Damn. I didn't really know what it was, you know, it was something him and his buddy did. And I remember like what I remember was like at Christmas time, he would give all the aunts and uncles and all the friends like a T-shirt. He would make these mixtapes back when like, like old hippie like mixtapes. And then there'd always be like this plastic seal a meal bag, like he had OG seal a meal and shit. And he and they would be like, throw the shirt in the tape and all rip into the weed. And like there was always a a tray of cookies that the kids couldn't have. So I like grew up in the, you know, post hippie stoner parent kind of shit. Uh, and just kind of like absorbed it osmosis, you know, uh, my dad, my dad and his buddy grew in the basement in, in, in Noy Valley. Dude used to work for candlestick on the, on the field. Uh, in the, he was a sod squad dude. And, uh, like I snuck downstairs one day because we were never allowed to go when we'd have all the families would go to their house for, to hang out, all the kids we playing. And I remember like, I snuck over and I just saw this bright ass light and they were like, get out of here. And I, okay, cool. I didn't know what the fuck. It was like, you know, eight or nine. I don't know, you know. But fast forward to seventh grade, I went to private school as a little kid and it was not very diverse. Uh, you know, it was, it was just, you know, rich kid school in Hillsboro. I was not the rich kid, but yet nonetheless, I went there, got a good scholarship. And, uh, but then after that, I went to public school in SF, which is a complete culture shock. I went from, you know, being one of 300 white kids to one of like 40 in a school of four or 500. And it wasn't an issue. Like I didn't, I didn't know it to be an issue, but like, I just kind of found myself gravitating that way one day. Well, they were all like the stoner kids and next thing I know I'm stealing pops' weed and smoking weed. And like, it was a cool thing. Like we'd all, we'd meet before school, like at six 30 in the morning and like drink jolts and eat pixie sticks and smoke weed. And like, I remember my homeroom teacher in seventh grade came up to me and she's like, you're so young, slow down. And I was like, what? Like, all right, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, I fucking didn't know. That's a children's speedball. Yeah, yeah, exactly. A pixie stick, some weed. Yeah, and, and jolt. <laughs> like, jolt. slamming jolts at fucking 7 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. At <laughs> 7 a.m. Right. Getting Holy ready for shit. first period. Yeah. The first time I smoked weed. So the first time I smoked weed, it was the summer of sixth grade, between sixth and seventh grade. And my homie had an older sister who was like 10 years older. And I, he was one of the only, he went to the school that I went to, to the private school that I went to, but he was like one of the only other dudes that lived in Frisco. So we hung out together, you know, kind of just, that's how it was. And uh, her, his older sister was doing something and her boyfriend was like, what's up, you little fuckers? You want to get high? And, and I'm like, huh? And my buddy's like, yeah, 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 let's do it, let's do it. I'm like, all right, cool. And then he pulled out some weed. I'm like, I know what that is. My dad has that shit. And he was like, oh, really? And I, he gave me like a, 
a deer antler pipe. Like it was like a cut off deer antler Dude, with some like leather exactly straps what or whatever. About. And I, I took a hit and I went and volcanoed the whole bowl. And he was like, what the fuck, dude? And I'm like, I don't know. I never smoked nothing before. I didn't know what the hell I was doing, you know, instantly. And then didn't get high. Then we drank a beer and I got drunk. He like gave us like a Coors Light or some shit and each. And we drank that and got hammered and, you know, fucking summer of sixth grade. What are you, 13, 12? God, my daughter's fucking 13. <laughs> Hopefully she's not watching this podcast anytime soon. Hopefully she's not drinking, yeah. drinking Jolt in the oh, morning. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. <laughs> she's just a candy junkie. She's just that right now. Uh, um, and I don't remember if I got high or not. I just remember Volcano in the Bowl and then drinking a beer. And then <laughs> when school started... You know, that I kind of went into that already. Like I started hanging out with the, the other hippie kids and we were just all getting blazed and started stealing Pops' weed. Pops caught me one day and beat my ass. And he had good weed. It was, he had good he was weed. growing it. No, it was, it was yeah. fucking indoor, I guess. I mean, I, guess, I don't know if it was hydro. They had, I remember they had these like, like seeing his grow equipment, like when I was a high schooler and like finding shit in the garage. He had like huge metal halide bulbs. They were fucking, you know, bigger than rug, like watermelon size or bigger than rugby balls. And like, I hate, <clears throat> politically incorrect. They had like these Chinaman hat uh, light fixtures. I don't know if I want to say that, but that's all I can call. You know what I mean? They like, yeah. these, these like fixture hats. We'll cut that out. Like they had huge, these interesting like a fixtures. Sombrero. Yeah, a big sombrero with a big yeah. point on the top uh, and like paper mache pots. Um, Interesting. I don't know if they were paper mache, but they kind of felt like like egg carton or something like that. That's as close as I can remember. We're talking, you know, fucking thirty years ago, forty years ago. Yeah, um, that's when the bulbs used to come from like highway. <laughs> they would go up on the highway well, lights dude and pull them up. There you go. So he took them from the stadium, oh, from the shit. from the the lights, you know, from all the lights and candlesticks. So it was perfect. Yeah, they didn't have like horticulture lights. That was crazy. No hell no. Uh -uh. <laughs> yeah, and then. Uh, yeah, it just became it just became kind of a thing. And after like the third time my dad beat my ass, I was like, okay. And he didn't like that I was smoking weed that I'm, you know, in you know, seventh and eighth grade and I'm smoking weed. That was but he really didn't like I was stealing from him. You know, he's like, I didn't raise you to be a thief. Like, what the fuck? Like, no, you can't have it. And if you steal it again, I'm gonna fucking break your neck. And I'm like, all right, fine. And then somehow, like magically, not too far from there, I met a plug. Like and it was, I remember like, I, I said, I, I can't take Pops' weed no more. I can't afford to buy it. What am I going to do? And back then it was three for 20. Three for 20, you only bought grams. Well, my, my dude was an eighth for 60 bucks. I'm like, all right, I remember that night. I'm sitting in my room. It's fucking like freshman year in high school. And I just copped an eighth. I had me like a little old school teeter-totter Coke scale. I went down to H Street and bought a little scale. And I, I weighed out three dubs. And I was like, bam, got a half gram. Sold the three dubs of school the next day. Went and bought another eighth. And I, did, I had weed, so I didn't, wasn't smoking this shit. So after two days, I had a gram. Yeah, fast forward here I am. <laughs> pretty fucking crazy. Uh, and, Holy you know, that's, that's just kind of how it started. And it was like. It was fire. It was, you know, it was Indo. We didn't really know what it was. My dad's shit was, my dad's shit was like. Was it better than your dad's, do you think, or no? It was better than my dad's shit just because of the kind of weed it was. But my dad's shit was like sensi and Thai and like Jamaican shit. Like stuff you'd never see anymore. Like long finger buds with tons of red hairs and like little, like, they, you know, they would be like, I don't know, two fingers wide and like a finger and a half long. It was like crazy shit. Like I didn't, it wasn't even like the brown. It wasn't like the Ocho's I got at Dolores Park with all the seeds from the, the straight Sudeño Mexican dudes who were like, okay, eight bucks is cool. Give you a little bag of tinfoil, pull up a flap of dirt and throw some weed to you. <laughs> uh, we'd put our beanery money, our lunch money together to go after school and get that. Like it was way better than that. Shit looks so different. And then this one dude, we called him Fildo because he had the endo and his name was Phil. I don't know. Hey, Phil. Peace. Thanks, brother. Appreciate you. Phil Doe. Phil Doe. Uh, <laughs> shout out to Big Phil Doe. Yeah, shout out to Big Phil Doe, wherever you are, homie. Yeah. Um, and he had just some, like, the craziest skunky green weed. And really, that's how it started. You know, I had a gram, and then I made 20 bucks, and then I did it again and again until I had my first eighth. And all of a sudden, I didn't have to 
pay for my weed no more. Like I was smoking for free, you know, after um, like a month, you know, kind of, you know, you're smoking your, your profit, but it was better than like saving my allowance and shit or having to like go crush, like pops used to make me recycle. So I'd crush cans on a Saturday to make a few extra bucks, you know, or he worked, he worked on sailboats. So he would make me like strip cable and then I could go recycle the copper. He didn't know what I was saving the money to go buy weed. <laughs> like he thought I was just like, take, you know, buying skateboard shit, which I was sometimes, but a lot of it went to weed stuff. Um, and then like, fuck high school, pretty much just did that through high school. And what's it like going to school in the Bay, like high school in the Bay? Cause I, like you think it's like normal, but like, if you went to like Florida or somewhere else, like it's way different. My yeah, I don't know how to compare it. You know, it's like, yeah, it was just school to me. Like I, I walked four blocks like, to the bus it, and did some graffiti on the way and hit the bus, uh, you know, hit the bus on the morning and then got off with all my other tagger friends and usually met up for, to go smoke a doobie. Like it was just high school. You know, it was the, the, a couple of my friends had been to Amsterdam and they would put tiny bits of hash in their cigarettes. And they were the only ones that were like getting high Split between them. class without cutting class. Cause it just smelled like drum or the jarum. I don't even remember this shit. I'm not, yeah. But it was like, you know, just like bag a tobacco. Yeah. Shit. yeah. But uh, my one boy, uh, my, I, I won't talk, but I won't mention his name, but you guys heard Champelli. So yes, Champelli and I went to high school together. So we, he was you one. You know, of, it's funny. We want to get him on next. Well, I don't know if I can make that happen, but that won't be hard. <laughs> he I'm said sure. he's down. He yeah, said he's I'm down. sure he's down. Yeah. So him and I went to high school together and. Uh, That's dope as hell. Fucking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's player. Uh, uh, there's a lot in that story that I'll probably let him tell it, but like him and I go back and he's in a big way played roles in each other's early establishment in this whole thing. Um, you know, the, 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 the tight knit weed co community in Frisco, like if it wasn't us, I don't know who the fuck it was because like before weed had names, you know, you had your skunk, you had your tie, you had your, your Mexican, you had your Jamaican and your, Panama red and your whatever, all these fucking things. We, they didn't come with labels. There's the bag of weed, you know, whatever the hell it was. It's just whatever people uh, called it. Huh? It was like whatever people referred to it yeah, as. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, that's the, you know. And then all region. of a sudden the nade came, which was what we called Canadian or, or the glues. And that was like one of the first nameable, like we had, a, a, Pelly and homies used to have this shit called the builder and then they had the Pelly. and I'm real bad with like what preceded what, you know, we're talking, you know, long ass time ago, but I glue and Pelly were around at the same time, not Champelli the dude, but the, but <laughs> I guess they're synonymous with each other. So whatever, you know, that's, <laughs> that's how that goes. But, uh, that's when names like, Oh, you got Pelly? Oh, I'm coming. Oh, you got some nades? You got some glues? Are they Superman's? Uh, you know, and be like, yeah, they're Superman. Okay, cool. And that was like, you know, what was, what was considered a Superman? <laughs> they actually, some of them, they just put the Superman like diamond right. with the S in it. And so we just started calling them Superman nades. And they would be like a square version of this or a rectangular version of that, like that, that, that big. And they'd be sealed as tight as can be and covered in salt because they'd come down in like crab boats from Canada. And like there'd be hockey, there'd be always like Easton hockey bags. And we'd take bags and like <laughs> no, soak them in the shit. water and like get all the salt mm -hmm. off them and then cut them up, you know, cut them open. They had mm -hmm. like five layers of sea. Like they had like, I don't know if they had rolls of like endless, you know, seal meal, but it wasn't like, you know, today's where you got like a, 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 an end and a, and a front. Like yeah. I think they were making both ends yeah. back then, but. Coming down in hockey bags, eh? Yeah, totally. So Holy we're shit. talking. 92, 93, 94. Again, I'm bad at those kind of things. Uh, you know, I exactly was, when, what was, was going five. on. Huh? I was five. Yeah. <laughs> See? And, and that's, you know, so like for turtle pie, like it's, it's as about authentic as you can get. We're not more authentic than other brands, but like we're about as fucking authentic as you can get. Like three dudes growing up in the city, you know, two of us were big stoners. One of us was just loved to fucking grow, was a little stoner and loved to fucking grow weed. And then, you know, me and one of, one of the other partners were, he was my other homie's younger brother's buddy. 
like he wasn't allowed to hang out, you know, cause he was too young. Uh, but my other partner, him and I went to elementary school together too. Just lost contact. We used to go to swim camp together. One day I hang, I see my homie's little brother, my homie's little brother's buddy. And he's with this dude, my other partner. I'm not saying neither one of their names. They, they don't come for these kind of things. I do it. Uh, and I'm like, what's up, bro? Like, how you been? It's been like 20 years, you know, since swim camp. Are you a cop? He's like, no, are you? I'm like, fuck no. He's like, all right, well, what's going on? Like, and Matt's like, I skipped over like, you know, a decade yeah. of like trapping in San Jose, whatever. I, I'm familiar with the industry. Like I've been in this since I was 13 and I'm almost 49. And so like, it's, I've had jobs and they were always kind of like, just to you know, keep shit cool. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Keep shit cool because you, you can't. Now it's okay to say you grow weed, but not in 2004. Not in 93, you know I mean? 94. Uh, no, oh, well, I wasn't oh, growing yeah. in 94, but yeah, but like in 2000, even in 2004, like I remember when I skip around a lot. So Instagram sorry. made it kind of cool. That was about when it started, wouldn't you say? I was just going to say, I remember when Facebook came out. Okay. And like I had, you know, my Facebook page and I had just pulled down some fire ass kush. And like, I posted to my Facebook page, my buddy's like, what are you doing, bro? Like, no, dude, you just busted yourself. The feds are going to be at your fucking house. You're, <laughs> you're never going to have those pictures off the internet. It's always going to be you attached to it. And I'm like, oh my God. And just like went into complete hiding, except for my voice on social media. Like Instagram was always the early turtle piles, always talking, but I never show my fucking face. Like I didn't grow up like that. There's no way. Like it trips me out how like, <laughs> I'm a weed celebrity and you know what I mean? Like people want to take their picture with me and like have me sign shit. And I'm mean, it's so fucking weird. It's like super humbling and just weird. Cause like, I just didn't want to pay for weed anymore. <laughs> we got this brand that fucking people fuck with and we got all these fire ass flowers and it's cool getting your flowers, especially when it's for flowers. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. like, and I've devoted my life and I was listening to Sherbinsky's thing and it's like, yeah, man, we, we did this shit when it wasn't cool. We did this shit when it wasn't acceptable. We did this shit when like, you know, every day, like I think I got PTSD because I rolled up to work every day. Like, mm -hmm. all right, there's no cop parked out in front. There's front doors. Like I would drive around. Like I would drive by the spot and just make sure the doors weren't kicked in that somebody, as best I could tell, somebody wasn't waiting inside for me or whatever. You know, you do that for fucking 15 years. That shit wears on you, you know? So, you know what it does? It pumps a shit ton of cortisol in yeah. your body. And it fucks you up. And it's why I'm kind of just chilling right now. Like I'm happy Hell just yeah. being relaxed. I don't have to cultivate anymore. Thank God for Green Dog and his amazing team for doing that. Straight we just kind of get to make strains and fuck around with packaging and, and strain names and, and try to keep our little quirky. Keep some heat on the show. Yeah, definitely heat strains with our little quirky names and logos. Absolutely. Um, Sorry, I skip around a lot. No, you do. Oh, it's all good. We'll, so we'll get back to natural. the storyline. And there's a there's a question I want to ask you later that's a little more relevant to recent times. Um, a cool collab that I saw saw you guys do. I, I want to remember to ask you that. But getting back into like you know you going to high school with Champelli, you know getting around all these guys. Were you around like jigging these guys early on, or like so, how did it kind of cross into like like when did you go from that? To like, you started like, yo, we're all right, we're going to pop off a spot. We're going to come together. We're going to, you know. So I actually went to middle school with Jigga. I think he's a couple years younger than me. And we knew each other, but I won't try to say like we were super tight homies. Like I def I remember looking him up in the yearbook like, oh yeah, I fucking used to hang out with this kid, you know, <laughs> but it was years later that I'm like, uh. I'm not gonna say his name, but what I, I guess yeah. people know his name's Jai. So I'd be like, oh, Jai, I can fucking go looking. Like, oh, I do yeah. remember this kid. Okay, yeah. cool. But I, I, I'm not gonna front like, you know, we were besties in, at Everett. Yeah. Um, but Pelly and I, we got down hard for years and we were, we were tight in, in the Pelly days and in the, in the Mac Dre fucking heat of the days. Cause our other boy, Jonas, did all the producing. Wash yeah. House Records, shout out Jonas was up here. Uh, <laughs> he, he was producing Mac Dre tough. Wow. And that's the Pelly Mac Dre Wash House Records. Like that was my that was the clue the click I was in. We were all crewed up together. Um, Jigga and them they were they were the that that came like later on as as far as my knowledge because I wasn't really in that whole circle um, until I guess. 
the mid to two, the mid two thousands, you know, again, I'm super bad with time. Like it, it, the whole thing has just been, you know, one long ass story, like putting timestamps on, it's been a little bit challenging for me. Um, but we went from being the glue guys and the nade, er, yeah, the glue, the nade guys and the Pelly guys to then, <laughs> I'm sure I'm skipping tons of dope shit, but then, Ian came that Shabinsky was talking about and he was a friend of a friend and like his OG Kush like caused problems in our, in our crew. Really? It was because, that good. Because it was that good and it was that limited and one or two dudes had the plug on it and they didn't want to share it, but they'd come over and smoke some and they'd be kind of fucking dickish about it. Cause you know, you're fucking, you're 20, you know, you're 20 something. You're fucking punking on your friends. That's what and guys now do. It made you special. Like if you get, if you're the plug totally. for that, you're the man. Totally. Yeah. So, uh, then that's kind of right. And that's when I crossed into growing is I became good friends with Ian and he was fucking killer at it. And, uh, I was like, you know, I want to try this. Like, I, I, what do you mean I can grow it in my house? Like what? Like you grow it in your house? Like, fuck. I saw his basement. Like I want to do this. And, uh, I lived in the Excelsior and I had a house with an atrium. just like a little open hole in the middle of the house, fire. but mine had a glass roof on it. Uh, and it had like two little like spiral vents. So like heat would transpire. No problem. It wouldn't be a lot of condensation in there. Wow. Um, so not knowing much about outdoor, I, I covered half of it. Like I sealed, I didn't seal it, but I got like um, that silver bubble wrap tape that goes around your water heater and like sealed up the whole room. And I took um, one of those ladders that you can like bend. You know, it's like a four stage ladder that goes, you know, small rectangle, but then you can stick it all the way out and make it fucking 12 feet long. And I, I hung two 600 watt uh, HPSs up there and I was off and running and I was growing <laughs> AFKU. Just like Shabinsky, he said, I was like, oh shit, I was going Afku and J1. Cause my buddy's like, you're not starting with Kush, bro. Too fucking finicky, no fucking way. You're going to grow these beginner strains. And then once you start nailing these things, then you're going to go to Kush. And I was like, sure. Out the box. You know what I mean? Cole is an Afku, Cole is a J1. And all of a sudden I'm like, well, you, so I'm, I'm selling, I got my packs on the side. All of a sudden I'm growing a little bit of tree. And, and I just fell in love. It, that was it. Like, this is what I want to do. Like, it was, it was, you know, Pops did it. I want to do it. Like, it's super fucking cool. Like, I've never been super awesome at listening to some other man tell me what to do or boss. You know, usually my bosses were men and I was just like, yeah, fuck, fuck selling your gym memberships or, you know what I mean? Like, nah, I'm going back <laughs> to the closet. Like, I'm what's go, it like having that first harvest? That first oh one? Oh my God. Are it you was like, like just blown away? Or completely. Like, you yeah. know, I'm, I, Ian was there like every four or five days. I'm like, what do I do now? What do I do now? Uh, you know, like, is, is the mix right? And, and then how do you dry it? And it was all like old school shit. Like we, we de-leafed and we, we wet trimmed. And we were smoking full melt bubble hash before it was a thing. Like before it was a thing, we were doing that because we would trim our, whatever it was wet. So like we'd buck down like three plants. You had your little trim party, couple homies over with some fucking sandwiches, bunch of doobies rolled up, beers, whatnot, a couple movies on TV, a uh, couple DVDs. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you know, you'd pull an all day trim party. Everybody would have their fucking, their chickamascas or their fiskers. And every half an hour, somebody would come by with a little Safeway bag and take it all and throw it right in the freezer. And then We'd give it to him and he would just fucking bubble hash wash it. Wow. And like, okay. This is, I'm pulling the curtain back, but like we would call it Wansa, short for like heroina. So it was like, you got any Wansa? Where's the heroin at? You know, where you got any of the heroin? Like, fuck yeah. Because it's that potent. Because it was fucking that yeah. potent. And I remember not naming names, but I, <clears throat> that there are people that are come up a little bit. We're, we're in. We used to go snowboard. This is just one little side story. We used to go snowboard. We were big into snowboarding, like 15 of us. We were like frigging power range. Everybody had a different colored North Face suit on. We're fucking bombing down the hill, like thugging each other, pushing each other over. Like, you can't spin. You can't slide. You can't do this. And that, at the end, one night, I think Pelly pulled up and he's like, check it out. And he had fucking, he had some Wansa. And <laughs> we were fucking smoking out of a fucking crack pipe. 
Like, no lie. We had a little torch lighter. There's like six dudes in the kitchen and you held the lighter just far enough away and it would just, and the tiny bits of smoke and you just inhale and you're fucking, if you didn't fall over, you were like, you'd hold on to some shit because the hits would be so intense. And we didn't know. If, if we'd have fucking known then what it was going to be now, we'd be the bubble hash kings of the fucking whole thing because we, we had no idea. We were like, we're not telling nobody. This is our secret. We're not sharing this with fucking nobody. Like, that we'll sell all the weed. We'll sell the other hash, the keef that we're making. But this layer, this is for the fellas. Like, we're keeping this in the, you know, in the group. Um, who fucking knew? You know what I mean? That's <laughs> a super too. psychoactive form, too, when it's, like, what, fresh like what, that. When you, when you say a crack pipe, like, what's your definition of a crack pipe? Like, a fucking crack pipe. <laughs> like a low glass pipe okay. with a round with a bowl, bowl and a ball and a bulb in the it's like middle. Like a straight, straight. Okay, I ask that because like I see people smoke a weed out of shit like that now. Like you see that at the smoke shops, and I get what they use it for. But I've actually ran into a few people that have had them, and they got their little hit packed in it, and it's like sitting there, and they're ready to hit it. So like, it isn't like if you're thinking like the straight glass tube yeah. meth pipe. No, no, this thing had like it had like oh, a bowl a and a curve. <laughs> And like a little a little glass bulb in the middle. It was probably like But there was no big. way to smoke hash in those days except for like throw it on some weed. A screen. So or, if you yeah, yeah, or exactly. a screen. So if you wanted to try it, it was like you need to vape it. There was no way to do the tech that we have today. We're so. doing this. Yeah. But you're vaping it because essentially vaping it. Which it was is dope. fucking fire. Yeah, yeah it was yeah. fire. But it yeah. looks crazy. It, it it did look crazy. Like some one of my like girlfriends heroin, walked huh? in and was like what the fuck are you guys doing? And we're like, nothing, get out of here. <laughs> like, literally, like, we're smoking crap. Like, don't worry about it. Uh, and yeah, those, those were the fucking lit days. And eventually, like, Frisco got kind of clogged with us, like, our little group of people doing what we were doing. And I was also moonlighting as a full-time raver and end up moving to San Jose and was like, you know what? You guys got Frisco. I'm setting up down here. And then just kind of started doing my thing and, and got known for having good ass weed. What Again, this, this predates raves? all the girls. This predates me coming back to Frisco and yeah. growing weed. Like I skipped around there, but. What got you into raves? Like what got, what was the first like initial like, oh shit, what's up with this? So all of my friends back then uh, were two to three or two to three years minimum older than me. And like I lived in a neighborhood where. I was like, if I didn't hang out with these dudes, they were going to keep beating my ass or trying to beat my ass. Like I kept having to run from them and I'm like, fuck running from you guys. Like I smoke weed. Like what's up? I tag. They're like, oh, we'll fucking hang out. Like, all right, cool. And then everything got elevated. But, uh, sorry. Yeah. What the question you asked me? No. What got you into rave? Like the oh, rave. What got me into raving is yeah. yeah. Those dudes. It was like, it's, I'm a, a senior in high school. It's 92. And Raves were just like, just barely starting to take off in the city. You know, San Francisco, I don't care what anybody says, one of the epicenters of the whole EDM movement. Like, EDM, what's that? Oh, rave music? Oh, yeah, yeah, I was there. Uh, you know, whatever in Europe was happening, but like Frisco was the fucking epicenter for, I don't even know how it was in New York. I think New York was still like a different vibe. And I'm sure. uh, my homies were like, we're going out tonight. It's called Rave Call Sharon. I'm like, what? They're like, hippie white bitches <laughs> like all right let's go <laughs> like all right cool mm -hmm. whatever the fuck this was and it was at like some uh it was at uh, a salsa club on mission street called rockapulco which i'm fucking 18 so i've never been into that shit and it was an 18 and up uh and <sighs> that night changed my life for like the next fucking three or four years as a hardcore raver you know every night i got into promoting was super heavy in the scene in, in the city uh, as far, you know, like I raved like five nights a week. Holy and again, I'm, shit. I dropped out of high school. Uh, to, to, I had a couple, I had a, I worked at the grocery store during the day and then would fucking go home and sleep and then would rave all night long and would usually just go from the rave to the grocery store and work for a couple more hours. But, you know, you're 18, you're 19, that shit works, you know? But uh, at, my parents were like, you gotta go. I kept bringing girls home in the middle of the night and they're like, no, like, dude, you're 18, you're living foul. You're obviously high as fuck on whatever you're high as fuck on. And you keep bringing chicks. I'm like, you gotta go. And so they put me out. Uh, my girlfriend lived in San Jose and I was like, well, I'm gonna go live with you. And she was like, cool. My dad's in the military. He's never home. I'm like, all right, straight. And that was that. I moved to San Jose. I remember getting a job at the fish tank store and like, this just ain't working out. Like, <laughs> you know, because 
I supplemented my rave days by working at the raves, you know. Uh, and when I moved to San Jose, I'm like, well, how do I make money out here? She's like, well, we do those things out here too. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And one thing led, and that's kind of how, and I, and like I said, I, I was in San Jose just like, Going on. Doing the tree thing, just fucking going off right in the middle of downtown San Jose. It was kind of it was kind of weird because on the corner there was a mortuary, and across the street there was a Seven Eleven. So the mortuary would always be full of cop cars because they'd be eating fucking donuts or whatever they're fucking eating from Seven Eleven. And I was like three doors down, just bawling out of control. So I'm like, I'm never getting robbed because no one's gonna rob me when there's fucking eight cop cars here at all fucking times. You know? Yeah. I, I never got in trouble. You know? I actually got in trouble. Got into some trouble in San Jose on some bullshit. And that's, you know, we all got our thing. But I'm an equity. I'm, I'm equity in San Francisco now because of shit, bullshit that happened to me in San Jose. So, yeah. you know, it's funny how all things fucking work out, you know. If I ever try to apply for my equity status, like I know it's solid. I know it can be used. Just a bunch of hoops and like it's kind of predatory if you're not paying for itself like you have to give all you have to sign up for this and give all this to this company who's like maybe gonna give you some kickback and maybe take care of you and i'm like that's cool for you but i'm in this like i'm a cannabis person like it's not if we're doing this is gonna be some sort of collaboration we are gonna open a turtle pie store we are gonna do an equity program it's not i'm hitching on to your equity thing no nah, like i'm a factor in this my company my partners and i like we're it's it's got to be a package deal or it's not going to happen Oh, excuse me. No, it makes no, way real. more sense. I mean, that's what it's really built for, too. It's not built for someone to go sit down and collect a check, even though that happens. Yeah. I, well, I was going to those meetings. Just anecdotally, I'm going to those meetings early on because you had to like go to meetings and do all these things. And if you didn't have your scorecard filled out, you weren't taking it seriously. Every one of the meetings, this lady was like, so when do I get my store and my weed? And I was like, I'm out of here. <laughs> 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 Just, if that's how it works. <laughs> There's no way. And there's no way it works that way. I'm out of here. So I went to a few more meetings. I was like, you know what? I got sales to make. I'm going to go back and go back to work. I got plants to take care of. Um, sorry if I'm not answering your questions. I fucking no, dude, no. you're good. I digress oh. back and forth all the time. You're good, big dog. Um, uh, so go, yes. going from into out of the rave scene, right? And and now where, where does it go from there? So now you, you spent, you said what, how, five to eight years on raving? No, fuck no. Who and? can do that? No, no yeah. Who <laughs> can do that? No, not as hard as I was going. Um, I'd say 18 was kind of serious. 19, 20, and 21 were ages, were very serious. Uh, even by, by the time I was 21, like it was, it was almost like already wearing off just because I'd been going so hard at it already. And Five nights a week, that's no joke. Yeah, exactly. And like I was, I was so well connected that i was able to get in there was basically it would have been seven nights a week but the two the two other nights like the doorman just would never let me in you know all the other ones i had my little home you know what i mean like i'd been there every night i'm promoting the part i'm like dude i passed out ten thousand flyers for this party you're gonna let me in all right come on no sweat and then after you know tuesday nights at the chocadero after three times it was just like that's where mom's you know together it was fucking dope tuesday nights wednesdays at uh oh god what the hell's it cost i can't remember wednesday was some awesome party in North Beach and the weekends for whatever big rave was that weekend, you know? What, what, what was some of your favorite shit? The Funky Techno Tribes, Rave Call Sharon, Wicked. Wicked was the shit because I couldn't get in. So like getting in was better. And plus it was like women, not girls. You know, I'm fucking 19 and there's 21 plus in there. And I'm like, this is even better. Um, but like I, like I said, I worked it. So I, there was, you know, these people would do Love American Style and they do three of them. And then they would do Funky Techno Tribe. My Funky Techno Tribe came, came first. And they would do four of those or whatever. And like I found a box of flyers and I'm like, damn, I went to all these fucking parties. And these are just the ones I saved, you know, a good sized box of the old fucking, uh, you know, old promotion. Have you seen old Ray Flyers? You know, they're big no. and colorful and they got all the DJs on the back. Those and, are vintage now. Yeah, totally, totally vintage shit. I'm sure somebody would love them somewhere. That I, and I'm I'm not a hoarder, but I definitely kept like some of my older shit from the from from my younger That's days. Dope. Just like cool memorabilia. Um but Sharon's were dope. Like the um Moonlight Sharon, outdoor 
rave cautionary were sick. They'd be on Bonnie Doom Beach um, wow, that's in sick. Santa Cruz, which was just like epic beach, all night parties. Sunday afternoon in Golden Gate Park was also one of my favorites. That was called Spun Day because you were fucking spun by Sunday. And it'd be, <laughs> it'd be from like noon to 4 p.m. or noon to 5 p.m. in the park and just be a bunch of you know, <laughs> fucking <laughs> every rave music, house music, and a bunch of people just dancing in the park. And it was, it was great. You know, that's actually how I met the chick who I moved to San Jose with. I don't know why I'm talking about her, but it was just like a progression of time. Did uh, you, did you ever get to meet dad in the military? Yeah. Was yeah. he cool? He was cool and shit? Be downstairs in five fucking minutes. Wow. That's how you met him? That's how I met him. And she was like, oh my God. He just came home, huh? He just showed up one day. How did I know that would happen? Yep. I knew and, I had to ask you about that. Weird, like, this is how twisted it was. Like, there was three sisters, and they all had a boyfriend, and we all lived there with the mom. Oh, wow. So it's like seven people living in this guy's house. This guy leaves his house with his wife and his three daughters and comes home to his wife, his three daughters, and three other dudes. And so I come downstairs in, like, you know, my sweats, and like movie shit he's got his fucking guns out on the table and he's cleaning his fucking guns <laughs> and he's got like these marksman oh. trophies sitting on the table and i'm like oh fuck and i'm like yeah my dad was in the military and like i think that like maybe cut off like one tenth of i'm gonna murder you like just you know i just kind of just it's real quick and like put the fire out and uh needless to say that didn't last too much longer but i stayed in san jose for a bunch more years and and ended up moving uh I got fucking busted. <laughs> okay, here we go. Full <laughs> circle. The trip I was telling you when we were smoking Wansa in, in Tahoe, all at the, at the base of Heavenly, like I ran out of weed and my dad's birthday's in the middle of January. So this is the, we rented a house, the four or five of us went in on a house for the whole month of January. And uh, my dad's birthday, I'm like, I'm out of weed. Cool. It's my pop's birthday tonight. I'm driving to the city, go to his birthday, grab some weed. I'll be back in like two days. No sweat. Did that. Driving home from Pops's, I got an ounce in my pocket of Orange Crush. Fucking so fire. Old school orange, smell like straight orange soda. But in the trunk, I got a pound. I'm dead asleep. Uh, I'm, I'm dead asleep until we get off the freeway. So I'm just waking up. And I remember seeing a car in front of us. And I remember looking in the, um, I remember looking in the side mirror and I saw a car behind us. And then I don't know what happened, but like a minute later, red and blues. And I'm like, the fuck? You know, and I look at the driver like, what the fuck happened? I don't know. I made a right-hand turn, and all of a sudden I'm getting pulled over. And I'm like, I'm fucking dead. And I already knew it. And, you know, they come up, fucking two punk-ass cops walk up, help piss hands on their pistols, and like, roll the window down. Roll the window down. And they're like, just get the fuck out. <laughs> just get out. Because the orange crush was just reeking the car out. And instantly slam my head against the car, handcuffed. Thirty seconds, I'm fucking stuffed and cuffed. Pull the driver out. They look. They park the car, and they look in the trunk. Yahtzee pound. Okay, cool. These cops are like, <laughs> we fucking got him. Oh my god. They're like, oh, this dude lives five blocks away. All right, cool. Drove to my house. Let themselves in. My roommate's in there, literally fucking his girl on the couch, and. They're on E and there's some E on a thing on the oh. floor. And he thinks it's me coming. He's not expecting me to come home because we were in Tahoe for the month. He was going to come up in a couple of days. We rode together. He was going to come up in a couple of days. And uh, anyways, he's like him telling the story. He's like, yeah, I hear the door unlocking. First of all, I hear these really loud footsteps and the door unlock. And I'm like, fuck, Matt's home. He's like, and then all of a sudden I see flashlights. And he's like, I just stood up and stepped on the E. And I was like, okay, fucking brilliant move. You know, brilliant move. And he's like, literally hard dick cops walk in. I'm standing there, standing on E. My girl's fucking naked on the fucking couch with a blanket on her. And they're like, yeah, get dressed. And like, don't fucking move. And these cops ransacked the place. Ransacked it. They found everything but the gun, which is crazy. Like the one gun in the house, they literally found every fucking thing in the house but the gun. The gun was the only thing in the house when I got out of jail. And I was like, okay, this is out of here. I don't know if they're coming back. You know, I'm fucking 22. I'm in hella trouble. It's just yeah. all, all on straight illegal search and seizure. <laughs> straight yeah, illegal search, fucking total illegal search and seizure. Crazy. Straight crap. That was straight garbage. Um, What'd they find? <laughs> 
<laughs> like the college guys they probably. find the e under his foot obviously that, no but like they found my 10 hits of e that oh, i because you know i was into e and yeah. I, I had like a quarter ounce i can i remember my police report was like a quarter ounce of concentrated hanab- cannabis hashish you'll you know that's a felony fucking 10 hits of ecstasy for sale felony it was 10 different hits. Damn. They were just winners that I had saved. Like, this motherfucker's going in the box. This one's killer for, you know, like, you saved your fire weed. You saved your fire E. It was just, you know, bomb ass acid. I'd save that shit Head too. Stash. Fucking A. Um, they were like, yes, your honor. It was like ankle deep of marijuana in the house. Like, you couldn't step or move anywhere. And, and it, like, who has this much weed on the floor? But, like, every ashtray was full of fucking, you know, half dusted bowls and but my, they tried to make a case out of it oh, they didn't try to they like found, steal shit they were they like, found all of my like trim like all the shake that i just didn't throw away like i would make some butter every once in a while and like so they i got busted for like four or five pounds a week but like only like a pound of it was like a pound and a half was like sellable but my roommate was like like super like organized dude and he had a little shoe box with eights billy 50 johnny 20 and i'm and i'm just like Dude, who fucking does that? Like, I, if I don't remember it up here, like, you good, you know what I mean? You get to keep it, fucking. And so, I remember being on trial and being like, fuck this. This is fucking bullshit. And the, my lawyer was like, dude, shh, you can't do that. And I'm like, whose story are they telling, Your Honor? This is not fucking me. This is bullshit. And they was like, you know, uh, whatever break whatever the fucking you know call to stop to the fucking trial lord takes me outside he's like dude you can't be outburst i'm like but this is fucking garbage dude like bust me for the ounce bust me for the pound anything after the fucking search and seizure after they went to my house what they said was (laughs) well we noticed his house is only a few blocks away and we didn't want to leave his car we wanted to park his car in front of his house for him but then we wanted to put the keys in the mailbox but he only had a mailbox that hung on the outside of the house with no lock on it. So we were going to put the keys inside the house. Oh, they'd done this before. But the keys, the only way to lock the fucking front door was with the key. So these geniuses with their story, which I couldn't, my, my lawyer's like, you're not testifying because you have to say all this other shit. And so I'm like, dude, they can't leave. So they didn't want to leave my car keys in an unsafe position. So they wanted to leave the keys in the house so they could be safe. But you can't lock the fucking house without the keys. So it's just bullshit. So my lawyer went back and he's like, all right, like the judge knows they're lying, but you're the biggest weed bus they've had around here. They're not letting you go. He's like, so you got 5,000 hours of community service. No, 1,500 hours of community service and $5,000 in fines. 1,500 fucking hundred hours of community service. Like, do you know how much community service that is? He's like, and, and again, I'm just... I'm 23, 24, $5,000 is hell money. I'm like, yeah. where am I going to come up with this? Like, how am I going to do, you know? And I just said, fine, I'll take it. Stupidly. Stupidly, I took it. You know, I didn't know what else to do. I'm fucking young and dumb and just wanted to stop going to, going to court is the fucking lamest thing ever. Just tell me what the fuck I got to do. Tell me, don't make me do bullshit for two or three years and then fucking get me in trouble. <laughs> like, fuck that. I went to 40 court dates before they gave me a fucking sentence. It just sentenced my ass. Let me get this shit over with already. But it goes back to money. It always goes back co- to money. Of course. Because then they don't tell course. you, like, oh, you can buy down your community service and you can do this. And it all dwindles down to money. Fine. My community service dude was like, give me a sack of weed and a camcorder. You can go. And I was like, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> that was after like 400 hours. You That's know? why Pat Guns brings up the Bay Area. Yeah. It doesn't work the same as other places. It yeah, just people does. are way more easy going, man. Like, it's way more progressive. Bay, I'll just yeah. say that. You know what? But it ain't like that no more. Yeah, it's not I so think. much like that no more. Hey. The Bay people can't afford to live there. They had to move to Antioch and Concord <laughs> I, and all I, the other places. <laughs> the Bay now is full of other people who think the bay is cool and want to fucking live there you know what i mean like it's not it's not the same it's it's my home i'm from frisco but frisco ain't frisco the way it was when i was a kid you know what i mean like it's just not it's it's the quote unquote cream of the crop from every other place that brings their other other place shit to there and like well this is the way we do it now like no we still want to do it the frisco way and it's just different you know what i mean but again i'm i'm almost 50 so like that you know it's not like i'm turf beefing over frisco no more <laughs> um no yeah i mean i feel like uh all the bigger cities are 
everybody could agree it's much different, mm -hmm. especially after COVID. <coughs> COVID. You know, that was like the we push over the edge, you know? Crazy. COVID for was a lot great of big for cities. Cannabis. COVID was It's amazing almost like what we're cannabis. going through, though, with the recession, where like it was great and now it's on the flip side and the backside, we're all suffering. Same with like inflation and everything. Paying else. for it already. Yeah. Sh over a short period. Crazy, but, you know. But I mean, so that whole time, though, weeds in your life, are you're growing your what, what are some of your f favorite strains that you end up cultivating in that time? And where does it go? Well, I think I think to get back is like we covered a lot of your, like your younger youth, like 25 and up. Like, where did it go for you then? You started like you after you got in trouble and shit, you, you started like, you know. So, yeah. Um, so once I moved back. Once I was done with all that. No. Nah. <laughs> I ended up partying one last weekend with some home with a homie of mine and his homie. And the other homie was some straight shady ass character. I didn't know. And we had just literally taken Ian driven around the whole bay and just had the, he had a drop top prelude, right? Those were fire cat with a drop top though, prelude, right? Back then. We drove around the whole bay, just popping E's all day long. It was a fucking dope ass day. And I remember him being on the phone and being like, I'm in my drop top. I'm getting off. I'll be there in five minutes. Right? We pull up. Another fucking scene of a movie. Narcs, undercovers, cop cars. <laughs> fucking 50 guns pointed at us. I'm literally in the back seat with my chip celly. Like, what the fuck is going on? High as, high as balls on E. Just like, oh my God. Drop the fucking phone or we're going to fucking shoot. Okay. Okay. Everybody get out of the car. Who the fuck are you? I'm like, this, this is my, I don't even know this dude. Like I met him today. My buddy picked me up with this guy and they're like, you can go. I'm like, all right, cool. Where am I? Oh, you don't know where you are? Never mind. Get in the cop car. I'm like, I, what? Like, I've just never been to this part of San Jose before. I only lived here for a year. I've never been here. Don't worry about it. We'll take you home. I'm like, fuck. And they had just instituted blood samples like literally took me to san jose jail handcuffed me to a chair and stole my fucking blood and they're like you're on meth and i'm like i'm on e i'm like same shit you're in rehab now or you're in you're on probation now and again i didn't do shit like this was the one day i didn't do shit like i'm high on e and that was it just riding with some some other jackass who was like some wanted ass criminal i don't fucking know who this guy was that's crazy oh, God, i had no idea who the dude was spent the day with him and that was it and they're like, snitch on him. And I'm like, I do not know this guy. Like, I wouldn't snitch on him if I could, but I don't know him. Like, he literally picked me up this morning. We did E all day. We drove around and that's that. So I ended up testing dirty like 15 times for weed over like a year for my probation officer. And he's like, all right, I'm sick of this. You're going, you're fucking locked up. You're doing 30 days in Quentin or 30 days in rehab. What do you want? And I was like, well, can I get back to you on that? And I'm kidding. I was like, I'll do fucking rehab, of course. And so as soon as that was done, I was like, okay, I got to get out of San Jose. I got to get out of this. This is not a good spiral. I moved back to the Bay and that's where Kush came in. So early 2000s, late 1990s, early 2000s, I'm moving. I moved back to the Excelsior. Kush is, Kush is just becoming popular. And I start fucking growing the Afgu and the J1 so I can start growing the Kush. And then from there, that's what it was. Bro, you know? rewind though. They took an illegal blood sample from you. Well, it was legal. Yeah. But I mean, they had just instituted, you know, DNA sampling. Like it wasn't, they, the cops couldn't just take blood from you like the previous year. It was, oh, it's a new policy. We can just take your blood. I'm like, all right. And test it for whatever. And, you know, again. I'm still thinking I'm going to get out of this because, again, I didn't do anything. You know what I mean? Like, simply just a passenger in this fucking car who's high. That was it. And that, and that fucked me up. But it was, you know, it was like a good wake-up call, like, to get that. The, the San Jose was a different lifestyle. Like, I was holding on to some rave habits that I needed to not hold on to anymore. And it was real prevalent in San Jose. And I just was like, need to get out of here. So I moved back to Frisco. And that was that. I fucking moved to the Excelsior and wasn't Ooh. growing weed. Was just, just doing the weed thing, you know? What was the uh, rehab like? <laughs> the rehab was fucking hilarious because... Uh, People are getting more fucked in, 
up in there than the streets. No, huh? actually, no. It was it was a it was not that you couldn't like they searched your shit. Like I remember when I showed up, they took, you. they took my mouthwash, and I'm like, "Why are you taking this?" Like, you know how many alcoholics we have here? And I was like, "No." Still not realizing people drink mouthwash to get drunk. Like I'm there for weed. I got laughed at every day. Like what kind of dumbass? Only a white boy gets comes in here for weed. Like what kind of dumbass goes to fucking rehab for weed? Like. I'm like, dude, I've been in fucking, I've been on probation for so long. Like I would, like I was a, a really, dope Really, thief. you were in there for E. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you were in there but for I never e. tested <laughs> dirty for that after the time they stole my blood. Like, you know, yeah. three days later, you're clean. Like no sweat. And like my PO was like, he's like, I hate doing this, but my books got audited by my boss. And my boss like, how do you have this fucking dude who's tested dirty for you so many times? He's like, well, the kid's not here for weed. He's like, I don't give a fuck. He's tested dirty 15 times. Like you need to remand him. Like I would go in there, I was, I would go in there with my kid, you know, like try to play the whole sympathy card and just be like, yeah, oh, come on, man, I fuck smoke weed. Like it's not a big deal. And like, I was an addict. I, I couldn't not smoke weed for long periods of time. Like I just, it was super like to the point where I ended up getting into fucking rehab. And that, I wonder when that was. That was the first time I had been sober since I was like 13. It was that 30 day stint in that I did in rehab. And I was probably, did I have my kid already? I had my kid already. She was, so that was probably 98, 99. Uh, and moved back to Frisco, was just doing the Kush thing, and then got into growing it. What and was the was rehab like, changed. though? What was, I mean, it was, it was fucking, you know, it was lame. It was get up at 7 a.m., or if you were on breakfast team, you had to get up at 5 a.m. and then go make oatmeal for a bunch of fucking people all, uh, who need their methadone. I'm like, these fucking heroin addicts get to go across the street and get heroin every day. But I smoke weed and I like it's a Newport. Like, how is that fucking fair? Like, just give me one hit of hash. I'll be fine. I don't need, you know, I don't need methadone. Just, just let me get a little stone. And it was, it was lame. But, you know, again, like, I kind of had a superiority complex looking back on it because these people were fucked up. Like severe alcoholics, severe meth heads, severe crack addicts. Like this was still tail end of crack. You know what I mean? Like yeah. crack ain't huge now that I, as far as I know, it's still yeah. around, but it's not like a, an epidemic. Right. Like in 98, crack was still pretty fucking big. Oh, so, yeah. and like I'm in there, you know, puffing ports, just wishing I could go home and smoke some fucking weed and uh, go to another rave. Yeah. Go to another <laughs> rave. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I mean, rehab was. It was better than Quinn, I'm guessing. Yeah, I'm guessing it was better I'm than guessing. Quinn. You know, like I'm guessing for pretty sure. sure it was better than doing 30 days yeah. on that island. Uh, oh, it's yeah. not an island, but you know, it's a little fucking peninsula there. But uh, and that was, you know, it was good wake up call. Um, and was like, yeah, just stick to weed and, and hash, whatnot, and do some shrooms every once in a while. You know, tripping's one thing. Uh, and then, like I, like I said, I just grew fucking, I grew Kush. I used to like growing um, headband. Because mm. so these are the days where like all of my boys were doing the sour thing. Like the sours in NY. And that just was, I didn't like sour. I'm like, this fucking weed is terrible. Like it doesn't get me high. Like I don't like this. So I became the other Kush guy. And all my friends would do their sour shit and just buy my Kush. And my shit would be so like, you know, weed's sticky. My shit would be like butter. Like you'd put it in between your fingers and it'd be so greasy and slippery. Like it wasn't sticky at all. Like I was using so much like sugars and different kinds of like different molasses and things like that. Like I was always, I was worried about terps before I knew what terps were. Like I knew the weed was going to get me high. I wanted it to taste better than yours and yours and his and Ian's. Like it needed to taste better than fucking Ian's because he had the fucking bomb as Kush. And it, that was the best thing about growing. It was like Christmas four times a year. And then you have two rooms. So it's Christmas eight times a year. Then you got three rooms of Christmas 12 times a year. And then I kick the family out and blow the whole house out. And you it's like soil, a perpetual thing. Hydro? What kind of, you know, what are you running Kush like? No, I, I fucking, I got taught in, in rock wool mm -hmm. and did rock wool predominantly. Then Coco came out and pretty sure that's how I introduced uh, root aphids to my garden permanently. Not 100%, but fairly certain because when I switched over, all of a sudden I was having pest problems. Um, and the difference between, the biggest difference, aside from, you know, back then, 
we use what killed bugs. <laughs> it wasn't testing, you know, what kills Ray Davids. Okay. Yeah. Cancer schmancer, whatever. <laughs> I'm fucking 24. I'll worry about it then. Uh, and the, the, so I, tr- I really tried cocoa, but me wanting white ash before, like white ash is a fucking thing. Everybody wants white ash. You know, it's, it's, it's almost like if your weed's not white, it's, oh, not, white ash it's is- not good. You know, and I don't fully prescribe to that all the way because there's many variables that make your, your ash white or not. Um, but it was nonetheless, it was a goal that I strive for. And my flush was long and my cure was long. Um, with rock wool, like literally I would take the hose on high pressure and I would jam it in the cube and I would just turn it on as hard as I could until the water that ran out of the cube was clear. Then from then forward, it was seven to 10 days of just feeding it water. With cocoa, that didn't work. With cocoa, no matter how much, the water would always find the path of least resistance. So I'd pound the bags every day and try to, you know, and then it would, and it would like, it just never tasted the same. So what I ended up doing was I built uh, my tables. I was doing, I was doing flood to waste, right? But I had like three gallon pots. So I only had to feed, you know, once or twice a week, depending on what part of the harvest it was in. I ended up putting valves on my tables and would steep the cocoa bags. Like I would, I'm like, it's fucking dead anyways. You know, it's, it's going to be cut down a couple of days. My humidity wasn't really a problem. You know, Frisco was like, your humidity was what it was. You dealt with it. The plants kind of adapted. You managed your rooms with enough in and out and enough fucking fans to, to mitigate it. This was before VPD. I don't know anything about VPD. Yeah, back then. yeah. What the hell? You mean you, you want it to be humid in here? Like Kush gets powder mildew if it's humid. Uh, but so from after the, the cube would rinse clean, it'd be pure water. With cocoa, I would have to like fill the trays with water, lock the valve, and let it set for an hour and a half, and then drain it, and then do it again. It'd literally be like a tea bag. Like it'd be dark red, light red, pink, you know, pink clear, and then, you know, in between the pots, it'd be That's like That's interesting, yeah. And I eventually went back to doing rock wool because I just couldn't flush cocoa the way I wanted to. I couldn't get my weed to taste. Because my people like, dude, what's up with your curse? Like, it, it doesn't taste as good. I mean, I know. You need to use that other chemical. I also did that. Like, I, cha- I would make the, I'd be the best batch I'd ever grown and I'd change something. I could make it better. And then I would change two things. So then I, if it wasn't better, I'd be like, which one fucked it up? Like, God, you know, it was like, always like chasing my tail. I can't remember how many harvests I ruined uh, just by hot, Hot dosing it, you know what I mean? Trying to get 1200 to 1200 on the EC, that's okay. It should be 1050, but 1200 is fine. They didn't like that. Uh, um, sorry. Talk myself. <laughs> you're, no, you're good. And where does it go from there? I mean, you're, you're growing batches. Uh, so, you know, when's turtle pie come in? When's all okay, that so that's, to go? that's the next leap right there is a friend of mine says, you know, Amber Alert. A buddy, <laughs> a buddy of mine had me cultivating for him. And that cultivation got taken away. Building was sold or whatever. We lost the cultivation. He's like, what are you going to do now? And this time I have that. I had three spots, four. So I had my spot a spot with another partner, and then this other spot that I ran for my other buddy. We lost that one. So all of a sudden I had a bunch of time freed up because I'm used to running, you know, I'm working six days a week, 10 hours a day, like fuck my wife and my girlfriend and my kid. Like I, I got a, I, I got, I had a kid when I met my wife to be, and she was young and I'm like, listen, this is how I roll. I work fucking 60 to 70 hours a week. Are you cool with taking care of a little girl? And she's like, well, okay. Like, you know, I got a bunch of little sisters, so I know how to do it, but like, okay. And thank God she stayed and, you know, shit worked out, but she allowed me really to just be, do my craft. Like I fucking was, did all my own cloning, all my own, you know, breeding, which was minimal, but nonetheless, you know, I'm managing 12 different rooms in four different spots and three different spots back and forth. Small, you know, I only had to help trimming, set up and take down. And like, sometimes I'd get help de-leafing just because, you know, yeah. you're in charge of 200 lights by yourself. You do everything 65, 70%. That's a lot. You know, instead of, instead of your 
10 lights, you're running a hundred percent, a thousand percent on your 10 lighter. Mm. Now you got, you know, 150, 200 and it, you just can't, just, just can't do it. Even at 60 hours a week, 70 hours a week, you can't do it. Um, so my buddy's like, what are you going to do now? And I'm like, I don't know, man. And he's like, okay, so I have some friends who have a delivery service in SF and they need a buyer. And I'm like, okay, what do I got to do? That's a good he's job. He's like, literally, you just look at weed and buy it. Dope. And I'm like, perfect. I'll take it. And so I did. And I became the buyer for this. Deli so it was, a, it was a dispensary. And I think they got closed. Their location got closed down. They moved. And then the, the partnership fell apart. So the two partners left and took the delivery. And the one partner kept the little tiny dispensary. Well, I ended up getting a job for the two guys with the delivery service. So I'm meeting in, in literally in the basement of the former dispensary they lost on Mission Street in like the back back in a cold ass room with just a few lights and a table and like three chairs. I'm like, all right, whatever. But in the 215 days, there was no shortage of people with fucking weed. So I'd sit there for four or five hours and I learned about dabbing. I learned all about concentrates. You know, edibles were like, I don't do edibles. Those things fuck you up. It's like, oh, you mean you can actually get a little bit of high from an edible? Like, all right, cool. So I knew weed perfectly. You meet was, all the brands too. You get to, you met the connections. There weren't even brands. Like, oh yeah, like, it was just dealers and with, people. Yeah, without and, like, without like tooting my own, own horn too much. Like as a buyer, I was so offended at every concentrate company had a brand and every edible company had a brand, but no one knew any of the fucking cultivators. I'm like, these fucking Corovas and Kivas and fucking... You know, and I'm not hating. I'm just saying like, these people don't exist without us. Like the people who actually grow the weed. And I, I want to say I was instrumental in several brands branding themselves in, into being like, who are you? Like, you know, I would put myself in the patient's shoes and say, I really like this God's gift. Do you have anything else by that guy? Okay, well, that guy had four strains. He had strawberry banana, he had God gift. He had, you know, this, that, whatever. And so all of a sudden, I'm like, dude, come up with a name. And Instagram was in its fledgling. I'm like, come up with a name, throw a couple pics on Instagram. So when somebody comes in, I'm like, we have these by Cooks Canna. We have these by Northern Emeralds. Who I'm pretty sure I helped push their need to brand the product because they had Titan OG, but I don't like, again, I'm kind of fuzzy. I've had people tell me like, dude, you don't remember the meetings you took with them when you were, and I'm like, nah, I don't. Like, I got a fucked up memory. Uh, so taking credit for shit sometimes is kind of hard. Not, not that it's what it's all about, but like, I don't remember a lot of shit, unfortunately. So, so, and then it, it turns, starts to turn into, <laughs> where's it get, turn into turtle pie code. So yeah, sitting in there. So <clears throat> it's funny how all these stories run together. I suffered from severe heartburn and my doctor was like, well, you smoke so much weed, that's probably not helping it. Sure, whatever, doc. You're always trying to tell me to quit smoking weed. My friend who worked for me at the delivery service was an early hash maker. And he, I said, dude, you're a fucking driver. Stop being a driver. You're making bubble hash, full melt bubble hash and, and flour or, and hash rosin Really, really early. This dude, Dr. Ladybug. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Very so, familiar. So that was the homie. Right? right. When he, before he had a logo, before he had a mm -hmm. label, that was the homie. And uh, he left and he started making hash. And he came in to smoke one day. He came in the shop to bring me some, some hash. And he's like, you still smoke flour? And I'm like, fuck yeah. He's like, do you eat the box when the pizza shows up? And I'm like, no. Sounds like Mila. <laughs> and I'm like, no. And I'm <laughs> like, Ah, I see what you did there. And he's like, why you smoke all that fucking green shit? Like, you just want the stuff on top. And like, instantly I quit smoking weed and was a full-time dabber. Amazingly enough, it fucking cured my heartburn. Like, I was seriously a, a severe, like I couldn't go anywhere without Prilosec or one of them, fuck, one of a heartburn medicine. I couldn't do it. Like, I would literally go back home and get it or pull over and get it. Yeah. So going no, to this didn't work. So you going know. to hash completely, <clears throat> completely <laughs> got rid of my heartburn. I could yeah. eat barbecue and drink orange juice for the first time simultaneously for the first time in a decade. <laughs> like, are you fucking kidding me? Washing it down with spaghetti. And those are all triggers oh. would, would just, you know what I mean? Instantly give me the worst fucking heartburn. 
So I'm like, I'm never going back to smoking weed. Gavin's the best. Problem is with a lot of things in my life, it was excess. And for me personally, it, it put me on a downward spiral. Gavin did. Gavin did. It was too much. It was my body couldn't metabolize the, I mean, I'm the buyer for a club. So I'm fucking taking 15, 20 dabs a day. No sweat. You know, yeah. no sweat. Yeah, yeah. Your body can only process. Coughing hard like this, dude. For all sure. Time. I yeah. mean, it's, it's, it's a whole body experience. It's a whole body experience. Yeah. Let it alone. Yeah, it I, can't, I couldn't smoke hash full time. All day no long. Way. You know? Like. It's a lot. My wife would make like occasion. little comments like, you were a better father. Oh. You used to be more fun. Oh, Lord. Like, literally, I had my fucking, my rig and my box and my torch, and I was fucking all dabbed out. Like, we didn't have terp, we didn't have terp timers back then, but, and, and it, like, it, like, t- it over, it took me over, and it actually led me to quitting smoking weed. Anyway, so, sorry. So, I'm a full-time dabber, and, oh, here's, here's a whole part of the story I left out, this, and this kind of ties things together. So, I, when I have these three spots, I'm partnered with one. And he's real good friends at that time with Jai. They are boys. And, you know, which I was still cool with him. I, I never, I, unfortunately, I never had a time in my life where me and Jai were homies. Because I think had we spent more time together, we'd have geeked out on a bunch of weed together. Because we were both super weed geeks, especially back then. Um, but he gave us, he gave us the cookies cut. Me and my partner at, at the spot we had in the Tenderloin. And we were OG growers. And so we, you know, made a bunch of clones and threw one tray of cookies into our room of OG. Well, cookies being the freaky bitch she was, did what she did and shot pollen. And my partner and I, it was weird. Like one Kush plant was like 12 to 15 inches taller than everything else in the room. We're like, what the fuck? Like, what's up with, you know what? Let's just keep that one. Fuck it, it's talking to us. We'll just take it out. So we cut it out and put it to the side and dried it by itself and split the weed up. And uh, he comes to work one day. Uh, it was actually the worker. Our worker guy came to work one day and was like, bro, look what I got. And if this seed was fucking like this fucking, I'm, I'm lying. But like, it was the biggest, fattest, juiciest tiger stripe. And I'm like, where'd you get it? He's like, it came from the Kush plant. I'm like, yes, new Kush genetics. Like fucking I'll be honest, I didn't like cookies at first. Didn't get me higher than OG. I'm, I, am a, I was and am a, will always affectionately be a Kush whore. Like OG and OG dominant strains from my physiology work. Whatever it is, the, my endocannabinoid system appreciates derivatives of OG Kush more than it de- appreciates most other stuff. I believe that for everybody. I believe there is a strain of Kush, not a strand, <clears throat> but there is a strain of Kush I mean, of, of flour for every single person. Hopefully they're lucky enough to find it. Whatever it is that you want from your high, I don't know. I know what I want. I want to calm the fuck down. I want to be sedated. I want to be cushed out. You know, couch lock is what I like. I'm already fucking hyper. I can't stop talking. Uh, and so, and cookies didn't do it for me. Plus the nugs were pinner. You know, it was just like, fuck. I'm, and the difference was, is I was getting top dollar from my OG. Now cookies had t- supplanted the top dollar, but I have to grow twice as much to get the same amount. And it was just like a, a fucking battle. Well, cookie pollinated my original, what they guess they call flow or Florida OG, the E and OG, the Kush. Uh, it pollinated, female to female pollinated it. And I remember planting, I remember my, my, the worker planted it and it, you, you cultivate, it sounds like you guys cultivate. Yeah. So you, you, you see how different each strain is in their vegetative form, mm-hmm. right? Cookies, very flat, matte, matte greens, matte purples, these super wide, like what they just say, indica style, fat leaves. And I don't get an indica stiva thing, but you understand like the old meanings of those words. Uh, OG Kush has a more arching leaf with a very sheen on it, not purple at all, very green. Well, four, you know, three or four months later, I'm talking to my partner, I'm like, dude, where is this fucking new Kush genetic? And he's like, nah, dude, like, it's this thing right here. And sure enough, she was right in the middle. Like, Cookie was like this, OG was like this. She kind of was here and was 
darker green, lighter purple, kind of gloss, kind of matte, like like a 50-50 fucking cross. Nah, uh, 65, 35 cross on the on the mother, right? It's still pretty cookie dominant, but you definitely saw the OG leaning. We grew that out and I called that sweet cooks. And if you go like to my old Cush City phone five page, like there's pictures of it. And it was not hating, but to me it was a better cookie because it just had so much, it had a bunch of OG in it, not more OG. It had a bunch of OG in it. Just made it gassier, just made it stonier. Like if you smelled my, if you smelled my sweet cooks versus cookies, you're like, oh, this one's super gassy. Like that was all the OG that was in it. And um, so I had that strain. Growing that on the side, I'm a full-time dabber. I'm working at the dispensary. Ladybug comes in and he's, we're smoking hash together. And I go to, I already have the Turtle Pike team. We did a post like, <laughs> my uncle had a piece of property for sale. They bought it. We worked it. We, they worked it. Got a harvest out of it in Redding. Redding shut the whole thing down. One harvest in. Paid the bills, you know, put a little smile, but that was that. And my two partners were like pretty gangster. Like they literally lived on that bitch, like tented. And, you know, it was, it was pretty, it was rugged and rough. And I would go up, you know, a week, a month and just fucking do whatever I could help out, bring supplies, whatnot. Um, I'm rambling a little bit, but like the story is like so interlocking how all these things come together. I go to our little city grow, this little six lighter out on the Hunter's Point that I gave to them. That was the fourth grow. I couldn't remember. I was like, there's a fourth grow. So I had this little tiny one that I gave to them because I started working at the dispensary. I just didn't have the time. I'm putting so much effort in trying to get the dispensary from being a delivery to being a, a delivery and a storefront that my grow was suffering. The only one I could take care of was the one at my main house. I couldn't take care of any other ones. So I gave it to my two now turtle pie business partners. And um, they're like, I go to work one day and they're like, we got good news and we got bad news. And I'm like, always bad news first. Don't shit on the good news with the bad news erase the bad news with the good news like we named a new we made a new strain we named it after you i'm like all right it's like a fucking pot with a stick and like a, a top and maybe a leaf or two you know what i mean i'm like what the fuck is this and like we're calling it turtle pie and i'm like all right you know i appreciate that for you know what a cool because my nickname has been turtle i got off the bus one day in high school high as fuck and all my friends who didn't go to school were standing on the corner and I got a puffy jacket on, a backpack. I used to wear this little Ralph, Rasta fucking beanie, whatever. And uh, <laughs> the one dude was like, bro, he was like a fucking turtle. And so he was like, what? Tortoise? Tortuga? And that was that. And from fucking it, it in, in it ninth grade, I'm just labeled turtle forever. And they would use it every chance they could to fucking, anytime I'd be talking to a chick or whatever, they'd be like, get her turtle. She doesn't know that she, the turtle's waiting for her. And I, and they, and I always be like, me, mo. That was before it was cool. After Entourage, it's a cool nickname. Dude stole Back my shit. I'm day, like, you're yeah. the weed dealer, and it's me, bro. Like, did we meet at some point? You're like, you don't know what I went through for that. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, what up? It's Blackleaf. I'm here at Grow Generation. And guess what? Drip Hydro storm in the market. All the best growers I know are switching to it. And guess what? There's a reason. Because it's preserving terps. I keep hearing that. Preserving terps. And that's why we're here with Sunshine. Facility advisor, facility manager, overall the man with Drip Hydro. Listen Listen to why it's different, man. What's going on, guys? Sunny here with Drip Hydro. Thing is, at the end of the day, we just wanted to make a simple, clean, cost-effective nutrient line that nobody has really seen on the market right now. Nobody uses really our chelation formulas. Uh, the micronutrients that we have pulled to make this line is really just what makes it overall bringing that consistency and quality back to what we want to see in growing herb again and overall at the end of the day it's still really light on your wallet it's a five-part nutrient line and again if you're not staying sterile or you have a big facility and you don't want to run rock wool and you want to run a mix of cocoa with an enzyme or something you don't even have to run flow with it so at the end of the day it's just saving you money on your wallet while bringing the consistency and the quality of terps back we wanted to bring the terps back and bring the soul back to grow it. versatility cost effective and quality i mean what else can you ask for drip hydro first smoke of the day black leaf approved peace so we got a special offer for you guys whether you go in person or you order online any grow generation over 60 nationwide retailers the code is first smoke 10 and you're going to get 10 percent off an additional 10 percent off your already discounted price use the code first smoke 10 tell them the first smoke family sent you they're going to take care of you 
support the show, hop on the Patreon. We got new shows dropping, we got off the mic. We have so much stuff in store for you guys and stuff dropping every single week. Hop on the Patreon, first smoke of the day. New shows, checking in with Pack Odds and Blackleaf. We're doing a live each month and a lot of other shit. Off we the haven't mic. told you guys yet. Make sure you get on the Patreon. We'll see you guys soon. Peace. So the bad news was that they killed Sweet Cooks while they were making it. And I was livid because that was my first strain. It was an accident. So what? It was female to female. So what? She didn't hurt me. She wasn't throwing beans at all. She wasn't kicking anything. To me, it, it was like adding the cookie to the OG just solidified the strain even better because kind of like cherry pie, cookies was loose when she came out. She seeded up. She, she pollinated other stuff. Not, near, not like cherry pie, but like, like but not like. You know what I mean? Um, and we flowered it. We flowered the turtle pie. You know, this was Instagram. So it's 2017. It's like June. Dessert strains are very, very fucking in. If you're not naming your shit after dessert, your weed's not going to fucking do anything. And we're different. You know, we're, we're not. We weren't trying to copy Cookie Fam. They were the preeminent name. We weren't trying to copy them. Regardless of whatever loose ties I had to a bunch of my Frisco homies, those dudes. But nonetheless, the first strain we created was the name of the company. And it was a dessert. You know, but it was a very obscure dessert. A lot of people don't even know that turtle pie is an actual dessert. Um, so we did, I remember we did a Google search. There was nothing about turtle pie and weed. We did a hashtag search, thousands of turtle pie posts. None of them, we were like, okay, cool. We got a strain, we got a name, and we flower it. And my partners are like, you need to try this. Especially, especially my one partner, who's the fuck, who's a big pothead and big pothead. He's fucking a super stoner. I don't know what the fuck. What are we called now? Pothead, yeah, yeah. whatever. Uh, Expert level head. Yeah, he's like, bro, like, you got some here. And again, I'm only dabbing at this time. I'm like, all right, I'll smoke some. So I take some to work, and I pass out a bunch to all the bud tenders and the drivers and the whatever. And I roll up a joint, <coughs> and like 20 minutes later, I'm fucking nuked, and I'm like. I'm this fucking high off some weed, like, holy shit. And I kid you not, like, one after another, come in the office, like, bro, what? I'm so, I can't feel my feet. I can't feel my, I'm fucking having a panic attack. Like, it was fucking strong. And the, the first test we got was 34%. And this is in 2018, you know, 2017, when 34% wasn't, you know, low. You know what I mean? When testing was different, you know what I mean? Um, and it had some compounds like CBG. We didn't know what that was. And CBG is uh, CBGA. We don't know what these things are. Precursor to uh, THCA. Okay, cool. All I knew was this was it. If I'm going to smoke one strain for the rest of my life, for me, this is it. And what would you, what would you say it's like? What is it like for people it having is, had it? It is. So gr growing, it's, it's, it grows like cookie. Okay. But it has fucking nodes like OG. It's a horrible production strain. You don't see SCC, Sacramento Craft Collective. Shout out to Sacramento Craft Collective. We'll get to you guys. Uh, they don't grow up because it's like a pound and a third per light. And, and it just and when you have it flower wise, what's it like? It's like more of like it's, a it's, cookie it's kush. It's hardball. It's like colas are like thumbs. And that could be five grams. Super dense, super hardball, not super colorful. The terps on the nug are cool. Definitely a cookie OG terp. But when you grind it, you're like, ooh, gas, potent, you know, potent cookie gas. This is right when those things were getting phased out. Like cookies and kush were dying off and in were coming. You know, gelato was already big, but it was like really taken off. And, and the, the sherbs were really taken off. So, you know, on my days off, I'm running around to fucking dispensaries all over the bay with my little repertoire of flowers. Turtle pie being the, you know, the uh, first strain in the company and, and people loved it, but because it was, you know, like big buds were small, small buds were really small. Uh, and it not having that candy gas fruit forward smell, it started to dwindling off. Like we started getting like, when we started, it was like 1800 bucks a pound. You know, it was, it was, it, uh, and it didn't grow much. So it wasn't a really... It was hard, but it just got us. So, and at the end of the day, like I'm a fucking stoner. 
like all the rest of this shit, this and and this, you know, with all due respect, is fucking great. But like, it's because I love smoking fucking weed. Like, and I loved growing it and I just loved being around and Terps, me chasing Terps before we knew what they were. You know, that's just like, all that shit has just led to the rest of this fucking beauty that's come along with it. Like, I didn't have this as a bucket list. This, this bucket didn't exist when I was a kid. I'm, skip, I'm skipping so much shit. Like, I was a bud tender in San Francisco, and that was like my first experience in retail cannabis. And I'm thinking, this is surreal. It's a bunch of like thug dudes, and half of them are carrying heat, and we're in this fucking pretty shady dispensary in, uh, in the city in, in, uh, off on Ocean Avenue, not shouting them out. Uh, and it was pretty gangster. Like, you know, we didn't get robbed, but people tried, like people ran in with guns and they saw how many guns we had and they would run back out. Like it was, it was pretty, you know, it was pretty rough neck in there. And, and I'm thinking this is surreal. Like this is seven 11, but it's all fucking weed. Like, okay. Still couldn't really imagine it getting past that to, you know, what it is now. So to being like, I just didn't think corporations were ever going to accept it, you know, and ever obviously relative term, but, uh, so we have this turtle pie flower. We have, you know, my graffiti background. I hit up one of my friends. I'm like, we need a logo. Got this fucking bomb ass weed. You know, logos are super important. So he's like, what do you got in mind? I'm like, you know, let's do a turtle with a gold chain and a pie sign. And uh, he's like, all right, cool. No sweat. Drew it up. I take it to the club I work at and I show it around. <laughs> Most of these people didn't even know what the fucking pie sign was. And they're like, pie sign? I'm like, you know, 3.14, like, you know, math. Sadly, most of them, one dude was like, is that Hebrew? And I'm like, you're <laughs> fucking close. You're the closest one so far. Because it does look like a Hebrew letter. But it, it, is, oh, it, it may shit. be, I don't know the origin, uh, the origin of the you're pie like, sign. Yeah, bro. But you're the closest <laughs> one so far. The, the two people who knew what it was, you know, everybody else was like, oh, like pie, like blueberry and like no like anyways um so i was like yeah i don't want to be nerdy i don't want to be high i don't want people not to understand us so we went to a fucking pot leaf necklace nope we tried this we tried that and i'm like fuck it what goes around a turtle's head let's put a fucking layer around it so we did and the giants had just won the second of the three world series we're all from frisco grew up with orange and black and I'm like, you know what? Let's make the lay California poppies. They're orange. That brings it back. Turtle, my partner, not want me to say this, but somebody in his life called him honey pie or sweetie pie or fucking cutie pie or some shit. Turtle, pie, the colorway, Frisco, like it just kind of all fucking went together. We got this fire ash chain and people are like, dude, this weed is so good. Like it's medicinal. Like the only problem is I eat so much. And I'm like, yeah, she's a fridge cleaner. Like, you, you're suffering from chemo. You can't eat. Like, you have eating problems. Smoke fucking turtle pot. Guarantee you're going to fucking clean the fridge out. You can't sleep. Smoke turtle pot. You're going right to sleep. That shit is just, I don't know, that doesn't translate on camera, but it's straight, you know, you're, it's narcotic. It, the high is so heavy and like the terpenes in it are, I wish I had better memory recall. I probably should have looked it up, but the terpenes are, are those true classic sedative terpenes. And, and like for me, it yields like shit. Um, but I want to use it as a, as like the mother, for, I want to cross any male I can to it and just find new winners. So going to jump ahead of just real quick to the Magnum turtle. That's where that came from is my partner said, fuck your shitty ass strain. Cause he doesn't smoke too much at all. And he's like, it yields shit. We're never going to get out of this fucking basement if we don't find something that yields better. So he would like, go and buy seeds, but he'd ask the characteristics. So turtle pie at her best gets harvested in week 10. Um, she's an eight weeker, but if you really want the fucking, if you really want to enjoy it, it's week 10. Um, and that's where it's like from eight to 10, it's just like, mm, you know, and you're just like, okay, that's like putting on a fucking, a warm ass jacket or something. It just fucking just gives you a hug and holds on to you. But so he finds this aficionado, Mendelbrot aficionado, Magnum Opus Royal Kush number seven. 
short, gorgeous, purple. I'm, I, I, the only smell that I got from it was cherry pie. And again, we're 10 or 15 years removed from me seeing or smelling any cherry pie. But what's what came into my head? Like, oh, it smells like cherry pie. So to me, somebody who smells cherry pie, let me know what you think. <laughs> let me know if it smells like it. But it was 14%. Like, it didn't do shit for getting you high. I'm like, this sucks. Like, we're going to mix turtle pie with this? Like, this thing sucks. Sure enough, it gave us an eight and a half, nine week, squatty, purple, fragrant, pungent strain that has, again, like the cookie cross with the OG, took on most of its characteristics from the aficionado strain, from the magnum opus, but got its potent, because it was like 14%. And we just had a test and it was over 41 total cannabinoids. So the turtle pie just gave it the backside to it. Um, <clears throat> and I skipped ahead, I skipped ahead in that, but that just cause that's where the, the fucking, that, that breeding project came from, or that's where that strain came from. And, I, and we just got the ability to wash it and she washed so poorly, it was like less than 1%. So there won't be a ton of that going around, unfortunately. Oh, wow, this is super yeah, rare hash. It was super then. rare. Wow. Where it was weird, like when Ladybug first washed the, the turtle pie, he's like, dude, it's done 5%. Like, I've never seen anything <laughs> dump so much, like keep growing it. And we could never reach five. You know, we got a couple of fours and a four and a half. Whatever we, still whatever we did, we picked it at that perfect day. And he was like, I'm, I'm pulling out the bags and they're full. I've never seen full bags before. Like, it's crazy. Um, so the old version that, that took 10 weeks dumped hash, but then this version does it. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So you give or take, you either get the flower strain or the hash strain. You don't get I mean, both. Rarely. Exactly. Yeah. So the, like, it's just. The only turtle pie now is grown for R and D, and it's basically because we all like to smoke the shit out of it. It's good that you kept so it though. We get a couple plants, and it it gets tested, and doesn't you know maybe a few jars go out um, because people just don't want that anymore. You know, people. It's kind of indicative of the society we live in, but people want to show off shit, and turtle pie is not a show off weed. It's everything is in the enjoyment of the smoke as opposed to what you see in the jar. Like when we first got it, we put it in a four ounce jar. We're like, no, let's find two ounce jars. <laughs> it's like, all right, fills a two ounce jar. It looks like it's the nugs look huge in this little tiny ass jar. But, you know, you're looking at pennies in a well in the four ounce jar. Um, so, if, you know, it holds, a, it holds a place in my heart and it, it will. And hopefully, like we got some breeding projects coming up. Where we're trying to mix a lot of our genetics back to the turtle pie because, you know, all these runty Skittle things, they're cool. These, I fucking love gelatos. But to me, I, I would think, I think getting high the way I want to get high, the way I want my body to feel is number one. And then the terps that go with that is number two. And some people smoke for terps. And, you know, it's different. I don't care. No judgment on my part. Everyone's you know? list is different. Yeah, everyone's list yeah, is different. Yeah. But I want that. I'm so fucking nuked that I can sit down and I don't feel like I have to talk for the next 45 minutes without shutting up. Like, and, it, and that's what Turtle Pie does for me, you know? Play video games, watch a movie, probably fall asleep halfway through the movie, crush a bunch of food. Um, so I'm looking forward to, I don't know, these aren't official names, but like Turtle, Turtle X or Turtle Sidewalk, Turtle Foo You, trying to get some belts pollen to mix with some turt. Because really like, Shout out Dio. I don't like Zope because it doesn't get me high. Fucking love the way it tastes. But like I smoke a fat ass doink and I'm like, it just doesn't get me high. Not the way I want to get high. And Zope is so popular and those kind of, I'm not trying to call single out a strain, but like it's a favorite of Green Dog. So he's always rolling up Zope doinks. And I'm like, I'm going to go smoke this Fuyu because Fuyu is actually really stony. Sunday people are really stony for being in the line that they're in and those, those, um, fruit forward terp profiles they're they're actually they have a lot of fucking potency to them um where i just don't get that from the zope so much or, or or even z in general like it's cool i love the way it tastes but i'd love it if it was mixed with turtle pie because i'll actually get fucking nuked and i'll get all that fucking delicious citrusy zingy fucking fruity flavors out of it um i, I i'm looking forward to some of those crosses like if it does to any of those strains what it did to the magnum opus whew, Boy, it's going to be fucking deadly because you're going to get nuked and you're going to have a brand new, like, 
cookie gas citrus skittles profile like i don't know too many people that are hitting that right now i don't get out much i'm sure they are but like i have to wait till somebody posts it and i can see it on ig and then i'm like hey ted let me get number 17 out of that jar of uh, whatever his new crosses i'm i i'm my short term is shit but he showed some new crosses and i'm like yeah it's like these old i don't know he's doing something where it's like gas and fruit and i'm like can i Uncle Ted, can I see one of those jars, please? I'll yeah. let you know what I think of that. What's in this jar right here? Uh, that's our Gabble Ghoul. That's a RS11 Gelato X cross. RS11 Gelato X. Smoking that right now. Ooh. Smells great, man. Smells, Smells good. Beautiful. She's fucking delicious. Damn, that, that. Sorry about that. OG smokers are like a certain breed where like the guys that like really, really, really love smoking OG over everything else <laughs> is just, I feel like those guys like, only OG or OG crosses do it for them because very few things hit you that hard and have that certain tur profile that like almost is just like an all encompassing body like boom like lay you down put you out on the couch like and it, it takes like a GMO to do that or a chem like very few strains will get that potent. GMO is one of those which uh, unfortunately had a very short window in the sun. I still like it. Uh, and it's kind of popular down here still, I think. Another 10 but, week strain is probably why. It's yeah. Like, but like, and it's, it's, you know, all the hashers favorite friend, but them screets ain't like it too much, you know, GMO, uh, GMO in a bag in another place is, mm, no It's thanks. interesting, right? How it, how it goes like that. How the, the flavor, what do you think about what's going on right now in the market with flavors and how, you know, it's just evolving so fast. It's, it is evolving so fast. And that's the exciting part is like new Terp strains are right around the corner. You know, new profiles are right around the corner. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think it'll be like? The new ones. I mean, it's, it's, that's, it's hard to speculate. Like for us, I know we're going to try to put gas back in the candy because uh, I like, a lot of a lot of new strains, their their timestamp is short, but I think that's also because like this, the times we're living in, you know, 140 characters, Instagram, you're, you know, like things. Runs had a long time in the sun. Cookies had a long time in the sun. Skittles, and the Skittles crosses have had a good time in the sun, you know. But a, a lot of these other strains, they seem to come and go. If they don't, if they don't latch on, they're gone, which is sad because I think a lot have come and gone that are probably really great. Mm -hmm. that, the industry just hasn't absorbed, you know, this in a big way, the streets set the tone for what the industry, instead of the industry setting the tone, it's almost like the street set the tone, like so-and-so rapper says, this is good. So this is good. Or this whole like green weeds, not good anymore. It's like, if it's not purple, it's not good. It's like, it's almost hard on my soul because I smoked 10,000 green strains that were better than most of the few hundred purple strains I've smoked. You know what I mean? And so hopefully color doesn't color unless it's like turquoise. You know what I'm saying? If we get some new strain of weed that's a different color, I'm hoping that color becomes less of the selling point and that the actual flavor and potency become more of a, more of a selling point. Um, and that's what, we're not going to try to breed the color out of our plants, but we're definitely going to try to put some gassy, some more gas back into our fruit stuff. Like mixing the turtle pie, if we can get some turtle pie belts, um, I'm, I'm excited to see what that would be like because belts is big and chunky. It'll give her some weight. It has the good, the good Z flavor to it. Um, but, uh, uh, and, and good, what, sure background belts mm -hmm. is Skittles and sure. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, those things, little things like that, I forget. Like, I'm supposed to be fucking this weed dude, but like, or it's like Moonbo. That cross, yeah, yeah, that yeah. cross, be it. I, I forget all that shit. There's so many things going through my head. Like, those little details escape me. To add that into our stuff is, is exciting because I see it's where it's going. Like, I just went to Lumpy's event, and um, except for the SF Canna, congrats, guys. Um, except for their strain, the Cherry, Cherry Zerbert. Cherry something. Yeah, Cherry Zerbert. Cherry Zerbert. Mm -hmm. Everything else was a Z cross. Every, you know, it was uh, yeah. It was either Skittles or Belts. Oh, actually, I don't know what the purple dinosaur is. 
the the purple Dino from Blueprint that actually won. Yeah. Like I haven't even yeah. seen it. That shit's fire. I smoked oh, wow. it. Is, is, is there, is there Z in it? That's our new one. I, I don't know. Like when I smoked it, I didn't know like what it was across whatever. I just I smoked it with Doja and it was purple Dino. But shout out to Blueprint, man. Fucking yeah. putting out heat straight up. So my partnership with Green Dog. <laughs> Sorry, I keep bouncing back and forth. I guess things come up. Dude, like, we're all over the place, so, big dog. We're going to cover everything. You're all good. Green Dog was my son, is my son. <laughs> my son, no Green way. Dog. My son, Green Dog. Uh, he was one of the most, he was the most together kid that would come into the dispensary with his brand and his fucking unwavering price points. And. <laughs> The, I, he would give me as long as I needed, Dude, he don't but he no wasn't giving kickers, up a fucking bro. buck. If it was 32, it was 32 or 32.50, not 31 or 31.50. But he'd be like, you need six weeks? Okay, no sweat. Um, and so this, this kid comes into my office with these fucking fire-ass blueberry muffins and all this other fire-ass weed. And I'm like, fuck are you where are you like you have your shit so much more together than a lot of these cali growers it's a little embarrassing but i fucking dig it you know his he's very charismatic i'm like i fucking dig this kid like he's fucking got fire he's got good weed i can sit here and geek out with him all day on fucking bud talk smoke bomb weed with him and then be frustrated he won't cut me a break on the fucking price and love him for it even more when he's done um the dispensary made some bad decisions against my screaming and yelling and probably crying to not make these partnerships that they made and to not get involved with these people that they got involved with, but they did it anyways. And over the course of a year, a really good thriving dispensary ended up taking a shit because of the business partnerships and the people they fucking got involved with. And I would love to fucking shit on them all right now, but I don't do that. Anyways, so... Because of this business partnership, the dispensary wanted to default on hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of shit. And, I, and, I, and they were like, and you need to do it. And I said, wow, fuck you. No one likes you guys anyways. Like your, your name is not great. And I've been doing this my entire life. I'm not going to get caught up in this shit. I told you guys not to do this. You did it anyways. I'm not going down with your ship. This ain't, this ain't my Titanic. I'm off this, whatever. I jumped. But what I did was I looked at the list of vendors and there was three vendors that had product on the shelf that I just, and anybody else that got fucked, I'm sorry. It was not, I didn't fuck you. They did. It was just my name on the fucking receipts. And I get it. I've been that way. You know, I'm like, I've made a deal with you. I don't fucking make a deal with this pantry. You shook my hand. You took, and I get it. I've been there. I'm owed money from the same shit. But Gold Drop, Green Dog, and this little lady who makes a, an amazing topical called Canacare. They had pretty significant debts owed to them by the company. And there might've been another brand or two but I literally went in the dispensary and took it and went to the other dispensary with duffel bags and fucking just went in there and was like, I'm fucking shooting anybody who fucking, and I never, I'm not fucking shooting anybody, but I wanted to let it be known they weren't going to fucking touch me. And I took all the gold drop, all the fucking green dog and all the can of care off. It literally walked out of this club with duffel bags and like called Drew like, you need to come see me right now. And like, I'm in tears and I'm like, bro, here's like 20 G's of the 35 G's they owe you. Like, I can't do anything else. Like I quit. I walked out on my fucking pretty well-paying job that like, I was made to be a, a 215 dispensary buyer, not prop 64 dispensary buyer. I don't, fuck all that. Like I want to look and smell. I don't even want to look at the weed. I want to smell and taste the weed and then look at it. I would open the bag with my eyes closed. Taste it, smell it, and then be like, all right, my eyes weren't lying. Or yeah, my nose said this is shit and it sure is. You know what I mean? Uh, I didn't want my eyes to fool my mouth, and my, my palate and my nose. And Drew and I were already pretty cool. Like we had a healthy respect for each other. But I'm pretty sure that that gesture of me doing the best I can, I'm gonna get a little choked up here because that was a very tumultuous. Like I was, I went through it real bad when I lost that job because of the hit that my name took, you know, the, the position 
as small and irrelevant it was in the big picture, it, I was the king of that castle. Like the staff fucked with me because I bought good weed and like they could trust that Turtle or Matt was gonna put fire on the shelves. Like I was the only buyer in the Bay that would go to fucking hemp con or I would go to San Bernardino. I would go to all the shit with like a expenditure budget and I'd go drop five G's on Vader and fucking Moxie and all this other stuff that you can only get down here. And I'd bring it back and sell to the dispensary. And so it made us a really popular dispensary because I had fireweed and all the products from SoCal that no one else had. Um, That's why the buyer thought he could do that to you because he knew you were the face of it. So now it's time to fall on the sword. It's like, they take a step back. And yep. you, now you're the gonna, owner. You, I was the buyer. Exactly. Yeah, the but owners. you look like the face of it at that 100%. time. Because everyone thinks it's you. So 100 They didn't know who was yeah. running the scenes. You know what I mean? And I said, I'm not doing this. So I gave them back as much product as I could and walked. Mm -hmm. And I got people to this day who still hold me personally responsible. This one dude was sending me fucking death threats. And I'm like, bro, it's 3,000 bucks. Like, they owe me 3,000 bucks. We're in the same boat. Like, Matt doesn't owe you shit. I get how you think of it that way, but like, go set them on fire verbally, not legit. You know what I mean? Like, go fucking take it up with them. They're the place with the building, not me. Like, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, again, I was a, an employee. Regardless of my name on the paperwork, I'm an employee. So I bounce, and then I'm still, I'm taking packs, different packs around. <laughs> Gelato X is born. That's a good way to digress. Gelato X. One of our homies says, you want a fire cut of gelato? And we're like, yeah, we're searching for new stuff to add to the turtle pie menu. Cause one strain is, you know, it can't be one strain. Uh, and cushions weren't popular and sours weren't popular. And, and this is the, the new age of gelatos and the mochis and all these other things. Um, and so he says, you want a fire cut of gelato? Hell yeah. He brings over a clone and it's got a green little clone steak in it with an X on it. Like you, the little, you know, little clone steaks, little plastic things you put in the clone, had an X on it. Oh, we just got this gelato X, not 10, not, it was just X. And like we did an Instagram post. Well, the name was just born from that. Like it was just kind of happenstance that gelato X, the name was born through the fucking, the tag that came with it. And it was, it, it's, it was definitely the strain that took us away from turtle pie and put us into a Zaza you know, what's now known as Zaza category. And uh, this douchebag I used to hang out with was good friends with uh, Sendog from, from Cypress Hill and was, uh, went to the tour stop and threw some turtle pie on the table. Be Real rolled it up, smoked it, said turtle pie got that fire. We went from 3,000 Instagram followers to like 7,500 over the weekend. And that was it. Boom, took off, took off and running. And all of a sudden, we're somebody in the weed game. And I wanted to ask you about your uh, Money Man collab. Okay. How did that come about? So uh, when when uh, sixty four when two fifteen phased out and sixty four phased in, we didn't have millions of dollars. We didn't have a million dollars. You know, it was three friends getting by on what we were getting by on. And Frisco with its rules, and it's, we're doing this for the people, but the level for entry, the barrier for entry is fucking jumping a skyscraper with fucking one leg. It's impossible. So, so instead of spending too much money on lawyers and property that we can't grow in until we get a license, we just relied on what we were doing and built the brand from the street up. And COVID hit. And all of a sudden, our weed was everywhere. I don't know how it got there, but it was everywhere. <laughs> it's in New York. It's in Florida. It's in Michigan. It's in Texas, I guess. Uh, that's where Money Man's from, right? I don't know. That, so my partner at some point met another dude who was like a rapper handler or fucks a lot of rappers and, and like sports stars on like a homey music type business. If I'm getting this story wrong, it's because it's not really my story. It's my other partner's story of Turtle Pie. Like he put the Money Man collab together through his homie out of Texas. Um, I don't, I'm name dropping. I don't know about name dropping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's sensitive. But uh, 
yeah, that came about. And, and to be honest, like he was real about it and real attentive in the beginning. And then we threw a 420 party in New York and featuring, you know, pictures with Money Man and, you know, a meet and greet and his, him and his team of like a hundred rolled in for 30 minutes and rolled out and kind of left us looking a little some type of way. Cause like we were legit told like he would take pictures and sign autographs and shit like he, that. He and agreed to it? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. if him himself, I don't know. I didn't have that conversation, but in, it was agreed to. Like we, yeah. we wouldn't put it on there. We wouldn't have been yeah. like, you can fucking take a picture of money, man. If we were just, we wouldn't just push it out of our ass like that. You know, we don't need to do you, that. You we, say he was with a hundred people. I, I mean, in 50 to 100, like a fucking two buses pulled up with all these fucking dudes come piling out and we're giving them fucking weed. And like, I'm trying to pass the secure, one of his, one of his bodyguards or whatever. I'm, it, I'm, it's fucking my party. I'm wearing turtle pie. They got the one booth closer to the stage than we did. We gave it to him. No sweat. I'm like, hey, bro, what's up, man? Let's fucking smoke this. The fuck you want, man? I'm like. Uh, on, welcome to the party i'm like hold on bro like <laughs> you see the name up there you see the shirt like yeah. this is me we brought you guys here like let's smoke some weed fuck away with me from that shit i'm like all right well fuck you then you know and i walk away and i'm and i can't even get to money man he's insulated by four rows of dudes this is just some random security guard this is you know one of his entourage yeah, yeah. you know what wow. i mean some dude who didn't wasn't reading the tea leaves he wasn't feeling the vibe he didn't give a shit who i was you know some fucking 50 year old fucking skinny white dude in a in Gucci pajamas because we try to throw a pajama party, trying to hand him a joint. No, the fuck I was like right after COVID too. So there's there was a little COVID thing, but still he could have been like I'm cool, but it was just like a weird awkward thing. And then ten minutes later, there's <clears throat> IBS comes up and they bounce. I was like, all right, well. what? And IBS? What, yeah. What's that? <laughs> it's like it's not, you got the BGS. Oh, At least that's okay. what we were told. I thought know? it was like a certain agency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I IBS. It's like straight, we got IBS. Like, yeah. Uh, uh, a case of the BGs developed and they all disappeared almost as fast as they showed up. And he, it was, it was kind of, I don't know. Like, I don't know what happened. Like I haven't dealt with a lot of stars in my life. So like for dude to be like on calls and doing Instagram shit and talking to us and smoking the weed and fuck, you know, and then we do this party. And then after the party, it just kind of like fell apart. And we did one more collab a few months later. And then that just kind of went a different direction. Yeah. And it, and it was all brought this, this homie in Texas, this <laughs> set it up. Yeah. He set it up. And, uh, what was the strains called again? We called it the, uh, the, um, blockchain blockchain. Yeah. I smoked. Yeah. I smoked that the black cool. bag, right? Uh, and black and gold. The first something? one. Yeah. The black and gold one. It yeah. was. Yeah. Is that one blockchain. The second, what was the second one with blockchain? The first one. Yeah. It might the first, no, the first one's called epidemic. The Evidently. second one was blockchain. All right, yeah. Yeah, that yeah, was dope, though. So what, you guys, what was that? What cross yeah. was that? Oh, fuck. What did you guys end up doing? It was like some candy. Yeah, it was one of our X crosses. So, like, early on, <laughs> and, and we were talking about this a little bit before when you were over there, like when I first showed up. Yeah, that off the mic. You're going to have to check that out. It's on the Patreon. When, uh, when we, uh, oh, maybe that's what my partner was talking about. It was on Patreon. Um, when you got that uncut man we can't you know we're heavy we gotta, on that we got to put this all out <laughs> um, when when we started strain hunting for f basically just flowers to add to the lineup you know as trapping is moving to another stage you know with all the out-of-towners and we're trying to fill a, a menu um, we were growing a bunch of shit. You know, we got fucking two little six lighters and we filled it with one's an eight lighter, one's a six lighter. And we filled it with a bunch of different genetics. And I left the room light on on Friday and like day 12 or 15. And when I got back on Monday, I walked in like, oh, I've done this before. Fuck. I didn't say anything to my two partners. Like I should have just said something and cut the room down, but I didn't. I was like, we'll be fine. Nah, it was like a fucking 30 strain orgy in there. <laughs> like it was mochis and gelatos and sherbs and tur turtle pies and cushions just all getting it on. And the seeds we got, like 
some of our winners out of our fucking lineup are from that happy accident, like straight female accidental crosses. I was telling him earlier that whole bag seat. I'm, I'm on IG laughing as people are like, bag seat, boof, bag seat. And I'm like, you guys have no idea what you're talking about. Pop that bitch. Get a logo. Make a bag. Your empire is about to start now, genius. Like you're worried about <laughs> two tenths of a fucking gram of fuck a seed. That's your fucking new mylar, bro. Go get at it. You know, and it, and thank the Lord for bag seed. We wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for accidental crosses. You know, we'd still be smoking original strains, you know, original land races or original fucking whatever the all the original. You know, who knows? I don't know the rest of them, but like if it wasn't for crossbreeding, fuck, we wouldn't even be doing this. So Shout out to all the bags you know, out there. <laughs> um, and so we, Complex was doing a write-up and we told them the story. So they dubbed that a happy accident. So on some of our, we're putting our website together and we're putting our genetics. Some of them are going to be Gelato X times happy accident because we don't actually know. We don't know if it was a mochi. We don't know if it was a shirt. We don't know if it was 33 or 45. We don't, we don't know. Like, sorry. Open pollination. Yeah. Basically. Sorry. Like people are like, what the hell? What's, and I'm like, I, you know, I wish I could tell you, bro, but it could be like one of like 15 different things, you know, or maybe even more. Um, Sidewalk Sunday was a throwaway. It was a, it was one that we gave to that my buddy would grow, grew a couple times. Just the so seedy and he was calling it blue Skittles. And I put once blue Skittles on my page, instantly got a call from Skittles or got a, a skull. Don't fucking call it blue Skittles. Like, yes, sir. Got you. <laughs> like, I didn't call it. That's what it came to me as. It's nor is it blue, nor is it Skittles. I'm like, I got you, bro. I'm not, I'm not that guy, but and I'm not trying to side bust. Like that's your shit. But literally it was given to me as that. And dude just named it that to give it a catchy name, but it was fire, but it, it just had fucking Hermy seeds in it. And oddly enough, the few people I gave it to were like, we don't care. That shit's so good. We don't care. We'll be careful. We'll pop them out. Just keep bringing it. And after a few rounds of cloning, she stopped popping beans. And she settled down. You know, her genetics fucking got together. And we're like, okay, she doesn't pop season. She doesn't never pop a Hermie anymore. We slid that over to the fucking Green Dog team. And they kill it now. That's fucking strange. That was a throwaway. It was a non-Blue Skittles, Blue Skittle throwaway. And it was just... You know, we've been lucky because of the network of friends we have, because of the longevity in the business. Um, we're gifted some stuff. The happy accident definitely helped. Um, and now it's, it's <laughs> we did, a, we did a, a breeding project for IG just fucking around. And we got some males. And I was like, just slap it on the fan. And so he did. He went there and he fucking slapped like three or four males on the fan. And the whole room was full of pollen. And we were like, awesome. We got all these fucking seeds. But then we want to do, you know, a seed project. We want to do a seed giveaway. And the problem was, is we didn't use one male. He just like rapidly like grabbed three of them and just hit the fan. So you get one bud, you got three different dads in that bud. And so those seeds are just in jars waiting to be hashed out one day like gone through one day you know or it's too, it for you know we can pop five or ten at a time you know not devote too much space to these randos more trying to do more focused little breeding projects with our genetics with new genetics that are doing well that the industry desires because we know what we have we know our foundation of you know 12 of our 15 strains 14 of our 16 strains whatever we're up to now are are Pretty stable. We've had to cull a few, a few of them, but we're confident that if we take Sunday paper, prickly pear, fuyu, X, X, not everybody's breeding. X is like an early lemon cherry gelato. Uh, so like there's a lot being done with that right now. Um, but the other ones, we're confident if we start breeding them with new, new, new males of things that are coming into fashion, that we're gonna have a whole amazing lineup of you know, tried and true shit that has that new flavor, that new flair to it. It's, it's like Magnum Turtle is a weird one because on the streets, there was no love. Looks like runts, don't taste like runts. Don't smell like runts. Don't smell like lemon cherry. Doesn't have none of that. But when you look at it in the bag, you're like, oh, okay. You know, some similarities. But Wreck, they fucking love it. They love it because it's different and the high is great. And you're not, you know, that's the cool thing about Wreck is 
flavor is way more diverse. Like the streets, it's like you're locked into 10 shades of purple. Or wreck, it's like, it doesn't give a fuck what color it is. Like they do. You're like, of course they want the pretty stuff. They want this and that. But if new terpene, like we're going to do some, like breed Z to Magnum Turtle, that would be an amazing terp profile. Belts to Magnum Turtle, because you're, you're having this cookie OG, dusky, dank, like heavy with like this, Sweet citrusy flower on top. Like, I can't wait for these crosses, but breeding is expensive as fuck. And like, that's the one thing we just keep to ourselves. Like, that's just out the pocket every month. You know what I mean? We're spending a few G's a month just on our little <clears throat> six lighters to grow new genetics and to get nothing. You know, we spent so much money on sour tangies and Max and all these other things. And it's just been a bunch of fucking horse crap like literally barn food you know stuff you would give to a fucking horse or a county wispy just junk these strawberry bananas and tangies and you know over the what's it 2022 so over the past five years there's been a waves of different stuff that we've been trying to find other ways that you know other avenues to work in and you know i can't i don't know how much crockett seed we bought to get nowhere or how much uh and I'm not trying to name shame. I'm just saying like we did everything everybody else that we jumped in the seed lines and bought beans, you know, 500 bucks for 10 seeds, you know, we bought 10 bags of those five grand on fucking seeds to get nothing. Plus the, you know, uh, 12 or 13 G's it cost to run that place for that time. So people are like, you don't want to buy a strain or make me a strain. I'm like, yeah, quarter million dollars. <laughs> like what? I'm like, that's just the tip of the iceberg, bro. I said, here, go to the liquor store and buy every scratcher. You got better, you got better odds there. And then they kind of go, oh, it's that, it's like that. And I'm like, yeah. Like you ever seen two ugly people make a cute kid? Okay. You ever seen two cute people make ugly kid? Shit happens. It's fucking hard. You're not, you can put two of the best strains together and get nothing out of it. They just don't gel. You know, they some for some reason these DNA fucking, these DNA strands don't mix well with the other one. Um, I'm I'm definitely not a botanist nor a breeder as far like I like to like. In, I like to envision strains being blended together or like roll a joint with two strains together and see how that tastes and see, hey, can we make this flavor? Like, I like that flavor. Um, that's more where my partner comes in is he, he loves geeking out on that kind of shit and was like, I want, you know, he breeds for genetic attributes, uh, color, size, gestation. Where I'm like, does it get me high? Does it fuck, you know, does it get me high? Does it other people can get high? The balance hey, of the relationship. So, so all the things you guys are searching for and crossing and stuff, what do you think is going to be the next few things for turtle pie release wise for strains release wise? Okay. So we just, we're real good friends with SF Canna. Those are homies. Shout out to the homie, Freddie Biggs. Yep. Shout yeah. out to the homie, Freddie Biggs. Congratulations on the win. Yep, exactly. Shout yeah. out to my boy, uh, Cannabis Chris and the rest of the team behind the team. Um, those are real good friends with our, of ours and, They've been, uh, you know, either on the journey or visual, vis, um, watching the journey as we got started. Um, we we're a couple years older than they are. Um, so we just did a very small batch tester run of a strain called Real. Um, and it's <laughs> like, I, I hesitate when I say blueberry terps because those are kind of passe, but the shit got blueberry terps. It's like blueberry gas and it's fucking fire. And we're dialing it in, you know, we're dialing it in on one side. That's actually their cultivar. We're, we're doing that as a collab with them, not vice versa. Kind of, and it's like, I guess it goes the same way. You know, I don't, I don't know if it's SF Canon with turtle pie, turtle pie, it doesn't matter. We're going to be releasing that hopefully over the next few months together um, as we can get that ramped up into enough you know, five pounds isn't enough. You got to, drop's got to be 25, 30 pounds, especially something new that will fly off. Um, we got in a strain called Electric Jellyfish we're working on. We like to be a little quirky with our names, just a little bit different. Great name. That's um, dope. That's a thanks. great name. Appreciate that. Um, we have, oh, fucking duh, um, Emerald Cup. So Outpost, shout out Outpost, Kurt, the whole team at Outpost. You know, we fucking love you guys. Santa Rosa. Santa Rosa team. 
Um, we hear you know, so much good shit about that place. Yeah. It's it's fucking Shout great. Out to the I, I hate to keep fucking stroking Drew's ego, but it's fucking worth it. Like, dude's solid. Um, him him inviting us into his project was basically he was basically again back to the to the end of the dispensary days pretty sure that had played a factor in him coming to me and being like we're friends we have this fucking huge cultivation in sack we'd like you guys to buy in um, and that's how we'll get turtle pie out there done okay great the thing about that is he was so well established you know we're instantly in tlc we're instantly in fucking all the big clubs like there was no curve anymore we went from fucking being one of the cool kids, like, we'll be there in a minute. It's like, nah, we're fucking here and we're in all the fucking spots, you know? And it, and shout out to SoCal. You guys have given us so much fucking love down here. Like, you guys fuck with us tough and we really appreciate it. Making it in, making it in the Bay is kind of tough. Like, it's hard to be a Frisco, Frisco success story. And Cookies kind of has that mantle. And we're definitely a Frisco success story, but we get... I guess population, the amount of love we get down here is phenomenal. It, and it's, and it goes all the way to even, you know, down to San Diego, like uh, as it, as it leapt from here to there, like now they're showing us a ton of love and even in the central Valley, um, which is just, you know, fuck, we were so insulated in SF for so long um, or in SF San Jose, a little bit in SAC. Um, so we have electric jellyfish we're working on. And we also have, our, our brand new strain, we're dry. Okay, so that's what I was saying. We are, come Emerald Cup, we are planning to do, it's not finalized, but we're gonna do, Outpost has been cool in helping and having little outdoor events, like little seshes. You guys came, right? You guys went to the out? No? Haven't been up yet. Okay, but yeah. you gotta come to one of their events yep. because it's just heady. It's preferred, it's Blueprint, it's Green yep. Dog, it's us, you know, it's just, it's like legacy people. It's like the dudes you wanna hang out with, you know, yep. fucking, Ted's there, you know, Ted and the lab guys are there. It, All it, the guys you've seen it, on the show. Yeah, basically, basically yeah. <laughs> if, if, if you've been on the show, you come to these events, except for yeah, you guys. Yeah. You guys got to come. So we will. In, instead of. It's a little further of a hike for us. <laughs> okay. A little, yeah, you're right. It's, it's not that far of a flight. Come on. An hour and a half. Last year, bro, we rented an RV and drove up the That's whole awesome. team. Like literally family style in this huge that was RV. Emerald Cup. It, that Emerald was funny. Yeah. yeah, it was so fun. So what we're planning on doing for Emerald Cup is like a after party, not after party, a side thing. When you board Emerald Cup, mm, two to seven, we're going to be at the outpost, some fucking food, turtle pie booth. Uh, hopefully we get some of the homies to come and, and, and not just make it a turtle pie thing. And we'll do, we do these four or five booth, outdoor booth events. Brings, it brings people to the outpost, which is one of the dopest clubs in Santa Rosa. They have a monopoly on a ton of the top strains so if you're anywhere in that neighborhood and you want to get certain strains the only place you can get it um and the vibe is just fucking killer it's a little bit off the beaten path which i think probably hurts it a little bit but makes it the it makes the adventure and the event that much nicer because like i went through the trouble of driving down this into this business section but it's i fucking show up and it's just a who's who like fuck we had a sour wave uh Siding last time. I mean, King Waves doesn't fucking ever come out, so it was nice as fucking see him there. <laughs> um, fucking so for Emerald Cup, we we pheno hunted a bunch of LCG. It is what it is. That's what the market loves right now. We came down to two phenos that we really love, and we're dropping one of them at the Emerald Cup uh, at our side event at uh, the Outpost and Emerald Cup. Um, as flour, as flour. Yep, awesome. and we're calling it purple sticky rice. And I like a, that. a little homage to the Bay and, and um, to, you know, Asian culture and Bay is huge and, and, and they fuck with us tough. And how'd you come up with your names? Cause you got some really good ones. You bro. know, we're just kind of goofy about it. Yeah. Like um, gelato X was organic. Turtle pie was us trying to be relevant, but not be dick riders. You know what I mean? Like it was like, yeah, it's a dessert. But you had to look that up. You didn't know that, you know? It's not a ding dong or a ho ho <laughs> or a fuck, you know what I mean? Fucking, uh. It's and, not a ding dong. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't that butterfinger. So, yeah. So, yeah. Matt, and so Magnum Turtle, that was easy enough. It was Magnum Opus times Turtle Pie. Mm -hmm. But the original packaging we did, and I, <clears throat> we copied a, uh, uh, a Magnum condom wrapper. 
and it's like ultra luxurious terps, extra large terps for your pleasure, ultra, ultra smooth and luxurious. And it's like Magnum turtle and like the gold and it has, instead of the Trojan head, it's got a gold turtle head and our, and our, um, our fucking, our lawyers were like, yeah, no, <laughs> you're not dropping that. You they gotta, sue you. you have to come up with a new, <laughs> and we're like, we're, we're, we don't want to, we just want the cease and desist. We don't want to mm-hmm. get sued, but we'll take the cease and desist. And they're like, yeah, no, come up with a new logo. So we went and we did a, it's like a Magnum PI logo. We put a turtle with a mustache and a fat cigar and he's in a Ferrari with a helicopter. And we, you know, we just try to flip it because the, the Magnum condom wrapper was dope on a Mylar in the neighborhood. But the, the, uh, the IP attorneys were like, no, nah, we're not going to let you guys do that. We're, we're going to strongly suggest you not do that. Um, and that was also like, I wanted to come. It got a little, I hate coming off sound like a hater, but like the fucking, like literally everybody went down the candy aisle and picked a piece of candy that hadn't been taken yet. And that was just lame to me. Like, fucking have some originality. You know what I mean? Like, okay, Sidewalk Sunday. Cool. That's one. And, and it, I actually ate those when I was a kid. It was a fucking chocolate ice cream bar with peanuts. There's a vanilla, vanilla ice cream with chocolate and peanuts on it. I ate Sidewalk. It just came out that way. You know, whatever. Uh, turtle pot, dessert. But like, prickly pear? We got a fat-ass prickly pear cactus growing in the backyard. Boom. Name. Sunday paper? We were looking at the weed. My partner was looking at the fucking weed after we pulled it down, sitting on a Sunday edition of the New York Times. Somebody's like, oh, Sunday paper. And like in the comments, the fucking name was born. Electric Jellyfish was one of my favorite raves I went to when I was a fucking kid. Uh, what else? Giant Fuyu. My partner in, is mixed race and a Fuyu is a delicacy persimmon. And again, we're just trying to be different. Like, we didn't want to name it, you know? Like I said, there was a point where there was a Popeye sandwich bag and a fucking Lay's potato chip mylar. It was just like so lame and boring. Like, let me just glom on to some kind of culture thing, you know, and and have no thought process. And we're like, no, we're like artsy. Like, we like to be creative and like have our shit talked about. You know what I mean? Like, it'd be yeah. funny and and... New Make York, it your own. Yeah, totally. Yeah. New York embraced the fuck out of us. So we named a string of a ghoul. Yeah, what the fuck? It was, it was, hey, you know what I mean? Like, it just kind of like a lot of them come, a, come along just in like Seinfeld. You know, it's like a Seinfeld episode. Like something happens. Like, I, it's funny. Like, I'll be doing something like, that's a strain name right there. You know, I used to be dying over how to come up with a strain name. Now they, I just say something like, oh, that's a strain name right there. Okay. I'll see something in a movie like, oh, that's a strain name right there. Because it can just, like, I like strain names that are kind of goofy, kind of off, or that are visually thought-provoking. So, like, Fountain of Youth. Like, I say Fountain of Youth. Everybody has a, their own vision of what a Fountain of Youth is. But it made you think of something. It takes you to have some, a picture in your fucking head. You're like, oh, Fountain of Youth. Um, Lolo. Well... Lolo, I don't even know how we came up with Lolo. Because uh, Lolo got you super high, like got you low. And we're like, this is, man, this, I'm fucking high as fuck. Like, I'm, this shit got me in the couch. And like, some, my partner was like, something about a low rider and then said Lolo. And then we had the guy at the, the our, one of our designers come up with a bag. We're like, all right, that works. And we're, and I guess like we just wanted to be different about it. We just wanted it to kind of resemble us and be, you know, be a piece of us. So there's a strain, there's a strain that um, we're going to come out with called Ultra Laird. Sorry, Sean Pelly. <laughs> Back in the day, in the high school days, we used to call weed Laird. Who got, because you could be like, who got Laird? Who's Lairding it? Who's going to smoke the Laird? Who's got the Laird at, at, at lunchtime? You say weed, you in trouble, you know, but no, you know what the fuck Laird is, you know? And then like, we had the Pures and like the Ultra Laird. And so, plus I had a graffiti background. So I came up with a bag that was like an ultra, like an ultra marker and it said Ultra Laird. Nobody knows what the fuck it is, but I know what the fuck it is. And then we're tastemakers. So if I want to call it Ultra Laird and you're going to be like, all right, whatever that is, let me get a jar of that Ultra Laird. So we've got Ultra Laird as one of the names in the mixer. Um, Now it's just like trying to pair the very few killer genetics that we're able to come up with. And few is like, it's hard to, come up with A's, you know, B's are easy, C's are easy. Who cares about anything? You know, those things, unless it's a huge yielder or a huge dumper. Um, but 
coming up with that thin line. Like we want to stand out. We don't want to be, we want our packaging and our names to just be different. So and, like, what's the process? You found a thing, things that you think is a keeper, right? You found a, you're like, we found it. Do you take it to Drew? Do you take it to, and you're like, yo, take a look at this. We should run this or how, or what's the process between finding a keeper and then getting it in production? I want to say how I smoke. <laughs> I want to say how it smokes. Like, yeah, I mean, so working at the dispensary, it was like, I curated the menu. If I thought it was good, it went on the menu, which worked for the first year and a half. But people were like, well, I like this and I don't like that. And I'm like, what do you mean you don't like that? Like, I like this, you're supposed to like that. And so I was like, oh, you mean I have to acknowledge other people's tastes too? Well, what are those tastes? Let me figure out what other people like. And so for me, again, it always comes down to the smoke. Like how well does it smoke? How on, on the nuke scale, where am I? You know, is this a daytime? Is this a morning? Or is this what I really want every day, all day long? Like I want to smoke Kush all day. I really want to smoke turtle pie because turtle pie is an, evol is an evolved version of Kush to me that just does it for me more. Whatever the cookies did to it, cookies to OG, sweet cooks, back to SFV, turtle pie. Uh, for me, that's it. So when I get stuff that I'm like, okay, I'm super high. I could taste this all day long. Okay, this is going into the next phase. This is going into the next round. And then it's like, how does it yield? And then you got to get it tested and be like, all right, well, it's 22%. Okay, throw it away. You know what I mean? It's great, but people see 22% and they're like, oh, that's a two-cylinder car. It's really not because the, the turfs behind it are amazing. You just see that number 22 and you, you want to, you know, which I, I, on our website, we're going to try really hard to not post THC percentages and just post terpene profiles because we, I strongly believe that the terpenes are the key to the whole thing. What your body requires or desires from your cannabis is never going to come to you in mainly a percentage. It's going to be the terpene profile that's been put together and then I guess the percentage is how much as it affects you. Like, I'm not even sure, like, when they say percentage, like, if you're looking at this 42%, you can't take away just the crystals and this thing weighs 58%. Like, you know what I mean? Like, the, the, I'm not exactly sure how that breaks down as far as percentage, but stuff being, like, our strawberry melon, 27%. Yields, like, fucking crazy. People don't want to buy it. It's one of my favorite weeds because I get fucking nuked off it. It's mochi times, I want to say mochi times gelato X. Again, these strains, we made them so long ago. I should have these things. I just fucking have a hard time remembering. It's, it's on fucking paper somewhere. But it, it just gets you so stoned. And I'm like, just give it a chance. 26 to 28% is great. Like fucking smoke it. And they're like, nah, I only smoke shit that's 40%. I'm like, man, like your car goes 180. You've never gone faster than 120. Like, don't set these fucking irrelevant fucking numbers on things. Like, just try it. You know, fuck, get a pre-roll if you have to. I'm, trust me, if I'm telling you it's fucking good, it's not going to be shit. You may not love it, but it's not going to be, like, that's, that's kind of how I describe Turtle Pie. Like, we got 14 or 15 strains. You may not like them all. All of them may not be for you. But you're not going to say any of them are crap because we've gone through an extensive selection process to make sure, like, if we want to do a beeline someday, we'll have a fucking trove of genetics for that beeline. You know, we'll have a bunch of stuff that's not quite A grade weed, but that's really good. And, you know, for whatever reason, wants to be, you know, a $45 eighth or something like that, we could do that. But that's just not, you know, does Louis Vuitton have a second brand? Does Supreme have a B brand? And I'm, God, I'm, I'm, I hate to like put myself with those companies, but that's what we'd rather be than with like Mervyn's. You know, we don't want to be target the best thing at Kmart. Like we want to be fucking, we want, like I grew up in Jordan lines. I grew up waiting outside for four days for fucking Jordans. And I wanted that for turtle pie. And I, if it wasn't for COVID, pretty sure we would have had some of that. But like COVID sapped our whole fucking opening. So we had to open when you couldn't go to the store. You could get the weed through the dispensary, but it was delivery. You really couldn't go to the store. You couldn't wait in line. Um, our weed sells out in four to five days, sometimes a week. I'll take that. You know, that's, that's good enough. But I really like, I see those cookie lines. And I'm like, I fucking want that. Like I used to be not in cookie lines, but I used to wait in them fucking Jordan lines. And like, 
that anticipation. Like, I can't wait to get my the trophy. I'm going in there to get this fucking my precious little ring. You know what I mean? My my Lord of the Rings fucking trophy. And and there it just we we kind of missed that. So COVID hit. I don't know. Did Drew tell you about the fucking roof caving and all that? Green dog. So we had he did, yeah. Okay. So that that was that was 12 grown men sobbing <laughs> on a phone call together as. 10 of our 20 tons of AC decided rather be on the floor of the grow than the roof of the grow. You know, four days after we get our, after we get our fucking paperwork and I, I forget chronologically, I think it rained for two weeks straight, like heavy. And then in the middle of that two week heavy rain, COVID hit. So I was like, well, your shit's flooded and we can't work on it. And your, your, your dropping is going to be delayed. We were delayed a whole year. Like it went from January to January before we were able to get on the shelves. Uh, before we were able to do anything. And then it was still middle of COVID. So it was like delivery services or, you know, you couldn't, there was no lining up for shit. It's cool though. We still, we dropped during COVID and made it. You know what I mean? We passed the bar. We're still, you know, as far as I know, as far as I'm concerned, we're still one of the higher, highly regarded fucking brands. And we have no intention of changing that. You know, the middle is so thick of Chad and Brad and we have no desire to hang out with those dudes. Like, smoking hot dog water doing blow i'm cool no thank you and i don't want that weed either you know what i mean like nope i want fucking cabernet sauvignon from napa valley with a fucking wagyu that's the kind of weed i want you know what i mean um man first of all the turtle pie team everybody that didn't make it the people behind the scenes <laughs> you know who you are we fucking love you can't do this without you really appreciate all you guys do my two partners, you're not here. Hopefully I'm representing us all well. Um, endless shout outs to Green Dog, uh, Dirt Lord, Green Dog, uh, the other Green Dog, part of Green Dog, Elliot, you guys, the cultivators, they fucking, they, they hold it down. They love growing our weed. They're the best fucking partners. Um, and like, really, I'm, we're like a stable, it kind of feels like a stable now between us, Green Dog, and Blueprint. Um, I just hung out with Jordan for the first time for, you know, we, we got invited to um, potentially join the Florida MSO market. So Green Dog, Jordan and I just got, we just went out there and went and visited the campus and things are looking good. Um, so I got to hang out with Jordan a little bit more, found out he loves to play Call of Duty. So we play Call of Duty a lot now and we're becoming better fucking friends along with being like in you know, I don't know Ted that well, but I spend more and more time with him. Dude's fucking cool as fuck. So like this, this group of like SAC and Santa Rosa growers that we're becoming involved with, like shout out to all you guys, because we feed off you and hopefully you feed off us. This, this, this dope circle that we're all walking in together. It's, it's fucking, it's great. Like I've been doing this my whole life. You know, I really have, I dedicated my life to this. I sounds kind of stupid, but I don't got a ton of friends because I was either in the garden or people didn't want to pay their bills. You know what I mean? I lost so many friends over 50 bucks or a hundred bucks or 500 bucks or whatever. Fuck you. I hope you're happy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm happy. Thank you. It didn't cost me fucking $50,000. You know, like you could have took me for more. And I spent so many years hunched over, you know, either on my knees or fucking digging through the fucking plants, de-leafing by myself. Like, to be here, thanks to the cannabis industry for not going full corporate, like support your legacy brands. I want to shout out to all the people in the industry who fuck with legacy brands because you guys are doing it right. We appreciate you. We need y'all to stay with us. All the tech weed, all the contrived cannabis, like it has its purpose, I guess. But the people who really fuck with the day oneers, the people who dedicate their lives to this, like I appreciate y'all. Um, and I don't know, I could probably go on for a little while longer. It's I don't want to. It's hard to leave somebody out. It's be like, oh, you didn't say me. I'm like, ah, oh, man, fuck, I'm on the spot. Uh, but yeah, mo really mostly to the SEC and and the uh, and and Drew because we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have been able to do this the way we did it without them. It probably would have happened. Um, we have other friends. Shout out to the homies at Goonies, SF Canna. Uh, for sure, you guys are fucking in the trenches with us. Um, yeah. It's where where really, can everybody find you? 
oh fuck so turtle pie co we're shadow banned as fuck so you actually have to put the zero instagram turtle pie turtles my page we got a couple other pages turtle cup turtle pie co backup fake as fuck don't let them take your money try to get them shut down they keep taking y'all's money that is not our page yeah you're like we don't really sell turtles (laughs) yeah yeah exactly (laughs) um (laughs) yeah instagram's funny they'll shut us down for posting rappers holding our weed but people stealing our shit and actually trapping out of the DM, they get to fucking stay up with hell. Like, fuck Instagram. No they shout out to you. put on reels. Yeah, yeah, right. It's crazy. That's just one thing about Instagram. That shit is fucking, we did a post about the Magnum Turtle. And they were like, this post is doing so well. Prom- use our promotion tools. So we did. And they shut our account down. Like, we, we paid you to turn our fucking account off. Like, if you take our money to promote the post, that can't be the post that gets you shut off. Just want to make that, <laughs> you guys, yeah. the weirdest shit. Anyway, I don't want to go on about Instagram, but uh, yeah, man, oh, thanks yeah. to you guys for having me. Appreciate Absolutely. this. It's fucking Thank weird you. being in front of the camera and like people want to talk to me about my shit, but like stories is legit. And you know, it's, it's been a long time between the three of us. We got like 70 years of combined Ooh. industry knowledge, you know, from, outdoor to indoor mixed light mm-hmm. you know everything i've done every job except like i said this one day and drew's like you never been in uh, metrics i'm like yes never been in the testing part of it never been in the metric side of it and haven't owned anything but a company but all the other jobs trimmer gardener cultivator uh marketer all that like we've done all of that either individually and collectively and what it takes man you got to give your life to what you fucking love Ten thousand hours minimum Ten thousand hours minimum to get your black belt yeah Yeah. we'll get into some strain talk in the patreon if you're not on the first smoke patreon we always go into deeper and deeper stuff off off camera stuff we don't want to put on the main podcast some grow talk some strain talk some what's going on in the market right now talk some off the mic talk yeah there you go you check us out episode 74 it's turtle pie co Matt, we appreciate you, bro. We're out. Yo, welcome to the Diamond Mine, the diamondmine.la, California source for boutique genetics, powered by yours truly, Blackleaf. And you know what that means? That means I'm bringing my best genetics into this. I'm bringing stuff I've been hiding, harboring away, stuff I haven't wanted to let out. We're bringing all that into the diamondmine.la, and we're going to offer that to California. Go on our website, hit the newsletter, and see if you can rock with us. Get on board with some of our genetics and change your garden. The diamondmine.la powered by Blackleaf.